Welcome to Dumfries and Galloway College's Virtual Open Day. We hope you're all staying safe and well and we are looking forward to the new academic year starting in just a few weeks time. Of course, applications are still open, which is why we're here today. We've got some great information for you to help you decide which course is right for you to apply for. In the next few minutes, you will be able to watch an interview with the curriculum manager for the area you are interested in. This will be followed by Q&A videos for admissions and funding. We hope you find all the information you need in the following videos, but if not, please email info at dumgal.ac.uk and we will answer any questions you have. Or if you need specific help with the application process or course related information, please email admissions at dumgal.ac.uk. Today could be the day you apply to start your new chapter and we're looking forward to welcoming you to Dumfries and Galloway College. I could welcome Alan McKee into the stream. Good morning, Alan. Good morning, Stephen. How are you? I'm not bad. Not bad. Very good. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for inviting me on. No problem. Alan, could you tell us a bit about yourself and your department, please? Yep, yeah, so good morning, folks. I uh, hope you're all well. Uh, my name is Alan McKee, as Stephen said. I am the curriculum manager uh, for the built environment and construction. Uh, at both campuses at uh, Dumfries and Stranraer. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, any listeners uh, to come and apply for any of the courses. I'll, I'll detail them later on. Uh, first of all, I think I need to reiterate what Stephen said about the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we're working in uh, different times. Um, we're following government guidelines we are possible and we are uh, waiting on word as to when and uh, we can go back into the college uh, to resume our studies. In the meantime, um, a dedicated team of staff in the, in the construction department who have all got industry experience uh, prior to becoming lecturers uh, are currently writing exciting new online delivery models uh, so we can uh, engage with the students for next academic year and give them the knowledge and understanding prior to them coming in to do the, um, the practical uh, tasks required. Um, what we do in construction is everything is, is geared towards a, an apprenticeship at the moment um, in, a, in your chosen trade. Uh, we have employers that will come to the college and uh, they'll ask us for references or recommendations for an apprentice for the following year. So the full-time course is a, a great basis to start uh, your career in the construction industry. Uh, we currently have um, two streams, uh, multi-trade, which covers um, six different trades or trade specific, and they're at level five and four courses. The trade specific we have at the freeze are painting and decorating, joinery and plumbing. And within the multi-trade, you'll get a, a, a touch of them uh, and also bricklaying, plastering and uh, roofing. Um, currently, the, we've got a, a waiting list on some courses, but at the moment, we have uh, spaces at the freeze for the painting and decorating a diploma at a setting girls course and also some spaces at Stranraer on our multi-skill courses. So Alan, you were uh, talking about multi-skill, is that for someone who's maybe unsure about whether they actually, what trade they want to work in? Yep, um, some people, some people do DIY at home, some people have left school, unsure of what they want to do, but they know they want to do construction of some sort, it's an ideal course to come on learn the six different trades, what you like or what you don't like, and then potentially moving on the following year into apprenticeship or into a trade specific course. So uh, what opportunities for further study are there, so higher level studies? So again, it, it, uh, as I mentioned, the, the apprenticeship is, is the route that we're, we're heading. So we, at the moment, we do apprenticeships in bricklaying, painting and decorating, plumbing and joinery. Uh, you need to get an employer to uh, basically sponsor you 
take you on as an employee and you'd come to the college on a block release or a, a day release basis for four years. So if you're if you're already working in the construction industry, uh, that would be what the college would offer. What what could the college offer then? In what say again, sorry. If, you, if you're already working in the construction industry, what's the what's the path there? Okay, so if you're already working but you've no qualifications, uh, your employer may send you, or you could come and do a, so like a, a the diploma in painting and decorating. You come and get a level five a uh, setting guilds diploma, and that'll give you a qualification. It won't give you your uh, what you call your tradesman's ticket, but it will give you a sort a, a qualification you could take to an employer uh, to get an apprenticeship. I know we spoke a wee bit about this last week, but um, with the COVID-19 situation, what will Block 1 look like for uh, one of these practical subjects? Yeah, at the moment, it's currently unknown. Um, obviously, it's been practical, and a, a lot of the units are practical-based. Um, block 1 at the moment is looking like it will start uh, online. Um, it will be delivered remotely. And it will be focusing on the health and safety and the knowledge and understanding of your chosen subject uh, or trades. I've got a, <clears throat> a question coming in here. Mm -hmm. Where have previous students progressed to? Do you have examples of employers that they've gone to? Yep. Um, I don't want to name individual employers, but most employers within the, 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 the area, whether that's a... A, a small one or two man um, business or some of the multinationals um, have all come through the, the, the college, the apprentices have been through the college, many have went on to start their own business um, and then take on apprentices of their own um, and most, or, or sorry, some of the apprentices have went on, started their own business and actually have come back to the college um, as being lecturers now. So. Uh, you, you could go for as far as you want. It, it's up to yourself as to how far you want to take your your career. And could you say, and just generally in the courses, how much theory is there compared to practical and things like so bricklay and plumbing and? Yep. Yeah, uh, so in a general, uh, what we say is a normal year. There's maybe isn't a normal year, but what we try to do is we try and keep as much practical as possible. Um, we understand that applicants for these courses are wanting to get their hands dirty, should we say, um, and using the skills of their hands, while we still need to uh, couple that with the underlying knowledge and understanding of the, the chosen trade, uh, along with the, the health and safety. So there is minimal, but it is required uh, for the, the warden bodies to be able to um, pass the course. So uh, we, we try and keep it as much practical as possible. Again, what we're going to do is front load the, some of the theory into block one, or the, the, the first part of the year, and then we'll do as much practical as we can once we get the go ahead to come back into the workshops. And that's great. And could you just go over once again what courses you still have places on, just in case yeah. anyone missed that? So we've got a level five diploma in painting and decorating at Dumfries. There's spaces in that, and the entry criteria for that is three national fours or equivalent. It, it's a, a great course if you've been uh, maybe doing a lock, lockdown and have got um, been doing a bit of painting and decorating. I think everybody's been doing it in a garden, and you, you, you've, got, you've got a notion for it. Apologies to the postman. <laughs> Um, and you, took a, you, you actually think you, you could learn a bit from painting and decorating, you think you've got the skills to, to progress, it's a great course it's only on two or three days a week depending on what block and um, as many, many people who are in town to become uh, again their own employee empl employer and uh, apprentices from that uh, so painting and decorating at the freeze and multi, multi skill <coughs> course Excuse me. Um, okay, and uh, someone's asked a question here. Will they get a placement on their course? I know you talked about uh, apprenticeships, but is there is there placements on the courses? How does that work? The apprentice, apprenticeships are run either through CITV or through the Friesen Gallery College as a managing agent. Uh, you can give me a call 
um, the um, details through the college website and we can um, place you uh, or, or give you further information regarding apprenticeships. Uh, all things being equal, equal at the moment, uh, we'd like the apprenticeships to start um, in August, but it just depends on what, again, government guidelines are and how we're going to progress that and what the construction industry is like. So um, for placements, really, we don't give placements out to employers. It's up to the um, individual to, to find their own employer. What we do get is employers coming to m myself and saying, have you got somebody you can recommend me? Uh, so because they've done a year's learning within the, the workshop environment and they've got basic skills under their belt to start with. That's great. And uh, do you need any experience practically to get started on these on your courses? Uh, absolutely not. Some people come with experience, some people come with none. Um, the experience is what we teach. Oh, sorry, the, the, the skills is what we teach. So you don't need experience to come on any of the courses. Um, all we're looking for is a, that you apply yourself and um, you've got some uh, dexterity to be able to uh, complete some of the, uh, the practical skills. And you see in the practical subjects, do students need to have their own PPE and tools or is all the stuff that you need provided? Uh, no, no, all the tools are provided. We've got a great range of um, tools in all departments and all workshops. Uh, our PPE, um, we now provide you with uh, boots, uh, bump caps, high-vis vests, and either, either boiler suits or uh, workwear of some sort uh, to keep you protected while you're in the workshops. And also, are the facilities at Dumfries and Stranraer, are they similar? Yep, uh, both are, are fully functional workshops um, with technicians in, in both of the, uh, in all workshops or around all workshops, uh, and they're, they're multi-purpose, some of the workshops. Um, the, the, there's very little difference between them. There's plenty of space, and I say the resources uh, are all laid out. We've got machines, we've got tools, we've got uh, all the materials that's required for the, the course. All that really is required from the applicants um, is that they, they come um, kitted out with maybe a, so, some writing materials, some paper, some notepads, maybe a folder to put some uh, documents in. Um, that, that's all. There's no books to be bought. Um, we supply uh, everything. All our a, lot of, a lot of our materials online. It will be even more so um, after this coming year. And I've uh, got another question here. What support will I get from lecturers while on the course? I mean, just okay. sort of tutorials and stuff and, and yeah. ongoing support. Yeah, so there's a tutorial um, every week where either, either as a class or as an individual and the college services team have also got dedicated members of staff um, if you require additional assistance with specific needs, uh, whether that be personal or out outside influences, whether maybe money and things like that, uh, we'll be able to help with uh, whatever's required. Can I still apply for a college course? We are still accepting applications. Courses are filling up fast though, so we recommend you apply straight away. How do I apply? Apply online at dumgal.ac.uk. Use the search tools to look for the course you are interested in and then click the apply now button. How many courses can I apply for? You can only apply for one full-time course. If you change your mind about your course choice, you would need to withdraw your application and submit a new one. If I'm awaiting grades, what should I put on my application form? In the qualification section on the application form, list the exams you will be sitting and mark the result as pending. I don't have my own email address, can I use a family member's? It is preferable to have your own email address. If you are a winter leaver, don't use your school email address as you will no longer be able to use it once you leave school. How will my application be considered when I haven't had an interview? Offers will be made based on applications only at this current time. Please ensure all sections are completed correctly to give you the best chance of being accepted. When do I find out if I have a place on the course? 
All applications received from April onward will be sent an offer email at the beginning of the next month after the application is submitted. What is a conditional offer? A conditional offer means you either have to pass the qualifications you are working towards, provide evidence of existing qualifications or a reference. Your offer will explain what your condition is. What is the waiting list? All courses have limited spaces. Once the course is full, applicants are put on a waiting list. If a place becomes available, we will notify you straight away. How do I find out about funding? For SCQF levels 4 to 6, a funding link will be emailed to you. Or for SCQF level 7 to 8, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency. When is my induction? Inductions take place approximately one week prior to courses starting. Your induction may be a virtual one, but you are still expected to attend. When will I get my timetable? You will receive your timetable as well as any other relevant information either on your induction day or by email. You may also receive a temporary bus pass if this is applicable. The admissions team are here to help Monday to Friday 8.45 to 4.30. If you have any other questions, please email admissions at dumbgal.ac.uk. Attending college may mean you are eligible for funding. To find out, you should apply as soon as possible once you have been offered a place on your course. In case you are unsure of what to do next, here's a few of our most frequently asked questions to help you get started. How do I apply for funding? For SCQF Level 4-6 to six courses, you will be emailed a link to the online application when you are offered a place on a course. It is essential that you check your email regularly as this is how we will communicate. What if my course is SCQF Level 7 or 8? For SCQF Level 7 to 8 courses, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency online at sas.gov.uk. What information do I need to activate my online CAMS account? You will need your student reference number, which we will provide in our activation email. You will have to create a password. Keep a note of this, as you will need it to access your account throughout the academic year. When should I apply? You should apply as soon as you have been offered a place on the course. If you don't get on the course you want, you can contact us and we will change or cancel your application. You should note that your application cannot progress and will not be considered complete until all the evidence is received. What happens after I submit my application? We will acknowledge receipt of your application by email. The email will also remind you of any evidence you still have to submit before we can assess your application. How will I find out how much I'm entitled to? If your application is successful, you will receive an award notice telling you how much you will receive. It will also contain a payment schedule telling you how much your payments are and when instalments are due. Usually this is fortnightly instalments. What if my funding application isn't successful? If your application is refused, you will receive an email from the college outlining the reason for refusal. The student funding team are here to help Monday to Friday 8.45 to 4.30. The team can be contacted by email on studentfunding at dumgal.ac.uk. For more detailed funding information, please visit the finance and funding page at dumgal.ac.uk. What's more important than a choice about your future? And what if your opportunity was right here? Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you want to be. And whenever you're ready, choose a course that offers real skills for real jobs. This is not plan B, it's your plan A. And your future education is a choice away at a college near you. Welcome to Dumfries and Galloway College's Virtual Open Day. We hope you're all staying safe and well, and we are looking forward to the new academic year starting in just a few weeks' time. 
Of course, applications are still open, which is why we're here today. We've got some great information for you to help you decide which course is right for you to apply for. In the next few minutes, you will be able to watch an interview with the curriculum manager for the area you are interested in. This will be followed by Q&A videos for admissions and funding. We hope you find all the information you need in the following videos, but if not, please email info at dumgal.ac.uk and we will answer any questions you have. Or if you need specific help with the application process or course related information, please email admissions at dumgal.ac.uk. Today could be the day you apply to start your new chapter and we're looking forward to welcoming you to Dumfries and Galloway College.
Welcome to Dumfries and Galloway College's Virtual Open Day. We hope you're all staying safe and well and we are looking forward to the new academic year starting in just a few weeks time. Of course applications are still open which is why we're here today. We've got some great information for you to help you decide which course is right for you to apply for. In the next few minutes you will be able to watch an interview with the curriculum manager for the area you are interested in. This will be followed by Q&A videos for admissions and funding. We hope you find all the information you need in the following videos, but if not, please email info at dumgal.ac.uk and we will answer any questions you have. Or if you need specific help with the application process or course related information, please email admissions at dumgal.ac.uk. Today could be the day you apply to start your new chapter and we're looking forward to welcoming you to Dumfries and Galloway College. Please join me in welcoming Billy McRobert, the Curriculum Manager for Engineering. Could you tell us a wee bit about yourself, Billy? Yeah, it's on the can, Steve, yeah. Uh, my name's Bill McRobert, and as you say, I'm the Curriculum Manager for Engineering Department. Uh, we look after um, areas such as electrical engineering, wind turbine, maintenance technicians, motor vehicle, and mechanical and fabrication as well. Great. Now, it's a broad subject, but if someone was unsure about a career in engineering, uh, what would you suggest they do? Uh, it is a broad subject. Um, probably one of the broadest um, career paths you could actually find, to be honest. Uh, traditionally, what we used to always do was we would, in, we would invite them in for a wee tour around the college, uh, a wee look around all the workshops to see the activities that are taking place, uh, the tasks that the, the students are doing and what they're learning, etc. And usually that helps to kind of inform what the, the kind of career path they're looking for. Uh, we tended to do the whole of the, the basement of the college where all the workshops are from and um, the engineering stuff through to construction. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do that just now, which is a shame. But if anybody's wanting to talk through any of the possible career paths in engineering, um, they're more than welcome to get in touch with us. Our obviously contact details are all on the website uh, and I'd be happy to talk them through as anything they really need to know. Uh, I can kind of underground to that, Steve. Can I just have a wee run through the, the main areas of engineering and the kind of courses we do? Absolutely, go ahead. Uh, one of the main areas, uh, four distinct areas, um, electrical engineering being one of the main ones, well, the, the biggest of the four. Uh, we do full-time courses in electrical engineering at levels five and level six, mainly for people that want to move into being an electrical apprentice or are looking for a career in electrical engineering of some description. And from these courses, a lot of electrical apprentices in the southwest of Scotland uh, are actually picked up by companies. Uh, if that's not really the path you want to take, you can move on from there to an HNC in electrical engineering and even progress through with the college to HND in electrical engineering. You can then obviously have the, the possibility of articulation routes within some of the unis we work with. We have links with Napier College in Edinburgh and we're working alongside Glasgow University and, uh, obviously as well. Uh, we also do wind turbine technician courses uh, for people who want to move into the, the vastly expanding wind turbine technician um, career path. Uh, of, of late, in the last two years, we've had eight students who've gained uh, apprenticeships with local companies. Well, when I say local companies, they're working locally, but they're actually national companies. Uh, seven have moved to a company called Inch Team, who are up at Hairstains, up above the village. And one is working for a company called One Stop Wind, and they could be anywhere from the UK to Germany to somewhere in the middle of the North Sea, to be honest. Uh, a really, really good career, um, good job prospects, and, and a very good course, I have to say, as well. Uh, we also do motor vehicle technician courses. Uh, we do first year and second year on a full-time basis, and we also do first year and second year apprentices, all from local employers across Dumfries and Galloway. And obviously, the motor vehicle courses are available in Dumfries and in Stranra. Uh, on the mechanical side, we do fabrication and welding uh, for um, students, mainly apprentices at the moment. Uh, we also do a machining course and the big new machining uh, workshop that's just newly been um, updated. Uh, it ranges from lathes to CNC machines and we also have an assembly area where we do a lot of work with our um, wind turbine trainees, taking things to, uh, to bits, putting them back together, etc. And we also do a lot of kind of heavy lifting as well. So quite, quite a broad aspect uh, in engineering for whatever your career path may be. And 
another broad question. I know you like broad questions here. Uh, <laughs> do students need to bring any special equipment or PPE or anything when they come on the courses? Um, no, what they'll do is uh, any of the, the kind of workshop stuff, and most of our courses, I would say, were around about the 30 to 40 percent of the course is practical. Um, any it's any PPE that's required, we will supply, whether it be boots, boiler suits, um, safety glasses, hard hats, high vis vests. We supply everything that's required um, as part of their course, so they don't have to bring anything of their own. Uh, some people like to bring their own stuff in. Um, we try to discourage that in case something happens to it or gets damaged. Uh, and as far as tools are concerned, we supply all tools for all courses as well. That's super. So if you're already working in the engineering field, what, what can the college offer for those people? There's a, there's a lot of opportunities for people that are already working in engineering. Uh, a, a lot of the people that come through our courses uh, obviously end up in, with really, really good careers. Um, last year we had around about the 40% mark of our students ended up in employment, uh, which is really, really good for us uh, and obviously good for the students as well. Um, they ranged from people moving into uh, apprentice electricians' jobs, apprentice fabrication welders, machinists, motor vehicle technicians, mechanical fitters. Some people moved on into a position as a, degree, uh, a graduate apprentice. Uh, obviously, the ones we talked about earlier have become one turbine technicians. We've got people who moved into the overhead linesman. Uh, one the young student who also moved into a job as a trainee ships engineer with BP, so he could be anywhere in the world at the moment. He likes to send us pictures every now and again from, from the nice places, not from the, the not so nice things, I must admit. Um, so yes, I that's really a great prospect for them. But it's once they're actually trained and they've got their uh, become a tradesman or become qualified in whatever their area is, they can come back and do retraining. You do quite a lot of um, what we call the commercial side of things. It can either be courses for individuals or it can be courses for companies. We, do, uh, we make up bespoke courses uh, for a company if they want people trained in a specific area. Uh, we've just done two or three this year for various companies. But they can come back and they can do a lot of things ranging from portable appliance testing. Uh, electricians do regulation updates. They do inspection of testing courses. Uh, we do a course called Safe Isolation of Electrical Installations for people that are working with that. Uh, a new one we're just bringing on is called an Accessory Replacement Course, which is for some of the companies that do a lot of work with the Houston Gallery Council. We also do a course for uh, fully qualified wind turbine technicians called the BTT, Basic Technical Training Course, uh, for an organisation called the Global Wind Organisation, uh, and one of only three colleges accredited in Scotland to deliver that. Uh, we're also looking at moving into a lot of the kind of carbon neutral stuff with the new um, renewable area at the college, the Green Energy Centre, just uh, about to be opened up. We're looking to do quite a lot of courses on wind turbines, on solar, on ground source heating, on battery storage. And we've also got an additional one now, which we can offer on electrical vehicle charging points as well. So the list for whether it be someone who's qualified, maybe somebody who's looking to retrain because of the, the problems with the COVID situation, or even a company that's looking to get people retrained or upskilled, we can pretty much do anything in engineering whether it be from motor vehicle on electric cars or electrical or mechanical or fabrication or anything. Well, it sounds like you've got a lot on your plate. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> another, another hard question for you. What, what, how do you envisage the first session, the first half of the, the next session that's coming up? Because we're obviously not going to be able to act as normal. Uh, we're, we're going to have great difficulty, and I apologise for the dog there, yeah, actually, maybe somebody's going to go, I think. Um, the hazards are working from home. Uh, basically, obviously, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, at the moment, we are planning for kind of online delivery of the first block. As I said earlier, a lot of our courses, are the majority of our courses, sorry, are made up between 30 and 40% practical. So unless we can get the students back into the building, we can't actually do that at the moment. So what we're planning to do is to... The other stuff in the courses, the, the regulations, the technology, the theory, the core skills, we're going to front load the courses so as we can continue our online delivery at this moment in time. Uh, and hopefully as things evolve and we can start to get people back in, we'll start to feed back into the, the practical units, etc. And, and try and get a better mix of delivery, uh, which would suit us and the, the prospective students as well. That's great. Could you tell us offhand uh, if you have courses with any spaces still available on them? 
Um, we, we, we don't. We have, we've been really very popular this year, eh, which is fantastic. Uh, at the moment, I've got a few spaces left in Motor Vehicle, um, in Dumfries and in Stranra. Um Also, other courses still have a few bits and pieces. Again, if you're thinking about um, any of the, the courses, although some of them may be full, still get in touch and come and speak to us uh, and still put your applications in because we don't know what will happen between now and August, basically, and things may change. But don't be put off by that, please, and still apply for courses and get in touch and we're quite happy to discuss anything at all. Join us at Dumfries and Galloway College's Engineering Department and study towards a promising career route with some of the best facilities on offer. You can study in motor vehicle, electrical engineering, including our specialised wind turbine course, and mechanical engineering. We have a range of levels to study at, so we're accessible to everyone and we pride ourselves on the excellent facilities and industry links that we can offer to students. The facilities here in Dumfries and Gallery College are great and we have all the equipment that the learners need to get a good fundamental knowledge of the automotive trade. The best element of our course so far is working on the engines and just stripping them down and getting a feel for how they work. And when we do our theory, we get to learn how they work, what's going on, it's fairly enjoyable. I think the facilities at the moment are second to none. We've just had a workshop upgrade over the summer. Um, spent a lot of money on lathes and milling machines, especially some with CNC control. And you can't beat it, I don't think. The staff really are second to none. They're all experts in the fields, whether or not the mechanical engineers like myself, electrical engineers or welding fabricators and we have a lot of links with industry so work experience and, and hopefully apprentices and jobs at the end of it is it's something we, we kind of aim for with all the students. In the future I would hopefully like to work in a dealership as some sort of technician or you know somewhere in motor vehicle. Because of the college and the course they provided a lot of help with the mathematics side um, I feel I'm more instead to do what I want to do, um, so definitely 100% the college is definitely helping. So due to the choice of electrical engineering, I want to become an electrical engineer and join the RAF, so like, the electrical engineering course kind of fits that criteria. Take a look at the wide range of courses the engineering department at Dumfries and Galloway College can offer and to apply visit www.dumgal.ac.uk Hi my name is Graham Anderson and I'm an engineering lecturer at Dumfries and Galloway College. Now although we're in unprecedented times, as engineers we don't find a problem, we find solutions. So we will overcome ways of, of teaching because we still need engineers, we still need to train engineers. We've had great success over the years from bringing our young engineers and our more mature engineers into industry and finding jobs and being a real value to the industry and the area. Now this may look like a workshop I'm standing in here just now, but one of the ways I've overcome this is to be a bit more inventive. Now at the Friesen Galloway College and Engineering Department, we teach manual turning, we teach CNC turning. Solid modeling. All of these are very important aspects of the modern day engineer. And all of that can be learned at the Friesen Galloway College. So, Still apply for the courses. There are still places available for courses at Dumfries Galloway College. Keep applying and we will overcome this together. At Dumfries and Galloway College, we are engineering your future. Can I still apply for a college course? We are still accepting applications Courses are filling up fast though, so we recommend you apply straight away. How do I apply? Apply online at dumgal.ac.uk 
Use the search tools to look for the course you are interested in and then click the apply now button. How many courses can I apply for? You can only apply for one full time course. If you change your mind about your course choice, you would need to withdraw your application and submit a new one. If I am awaiting grades, what should I put on my application form? In the qualification section on the application form, list the exams you will be sitting and mark the results as pending. I don't have my own email address, can I use a family member's? It is preferable to have your own email address. If you are a winter leaver, don't use your school email address as you will no longer be able to use it once you leave school. How will my application be considered when I haven't had an interview? Offers will be made based on applications only at this current time. Please ensure all sections are completed correctly to give you the best chance of being accepted. When do I find out if I have a place on the course? All applications received from April onward will be sent an offer email at the beginning of the next month after the application is submitted. What is a conditional offer? A conditional offer means you either have to pass the qualifications you are working towards, provide evidence of existing qualifications or a reference. Your offer will explain what your condition is. What is the waiting list? All courses have limited spaces. Once the course is full, applicants are put on a waiting list. If a place becomes available, we will notify you straight away. How do I find out about funding? For SCQF levels 4 to 6, a funding link will be emailed to you. Or for SCQF level 7 to 8, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency. When is my induction? Inductions take place approximately one week prior to courses starting. Your induction may be a virtual one, but you are still expected to attend. When will I get my timetable? You will receive your timetable as well as any other relevant information either on your induction day or by email. You may also receive a temporary bus pass if this is applicable. The admissions team are here to help, Monday to Friday, 8.45 to 4.30. If you have any other questions, please email admissions at dumbgal.ac.uk. Attending college may mean you are eligible for funding. To find out, you should apply as soon as possible once you have been offered a place on your course. In case you are unsure of what to do next, here's a few of our most frequently asked questions to help you get started. How do I apply for funding? For SCQF Level 4 to 6 courses, you will be emailed a link to the online application when you are offered a place on a course. It is essential that you check your email regularly as this is how we will communicate. What if my course is SCQF Level 7 or 8? For SCQF Level 7 to 8 courses, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency online at sas.gov.uk. What information do I need to activate my online CAMS account? You will need your student reference number, which we will provide in our activation email. You will have to create a password. Keep a note of this, as you will need it to access your account throughout the academic year. When should I apply? You should apply as soon as you have been offered a place on the course. If you don't get on the course you want, you can contact us and we will change or cancel your application. You should note that your application cannot progress and will not be considered complete until all the evidence is received. What happens after I submit my application? We will acknowledge receipt of your application by email. The email will also remind you of any evidence you still have to submit before we can assess your application. How will I find out how much I'm entitled to? If your application is successful, you will receive an award notice telling you how much you will receive. It will also contain a payment schedule telling you how much your payments are and when instalments are due. Usually this is fortnightly instalments. What if my funding application isn't successful? If your application is refused, you will receive an email from the college outlining the reason for refusal. The student funding team are here to help. Monday to Friday, 8.45 to 4.30. The team can be contacted by email on studentfunding at dumgal.ac.uk. 
For more detailed funding information, please visit the finance and funding page at dumgal.ac.uk. What's more important than a choice about your future? And what if your opportunity was right here? Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you want to be. And whenever you're ready, choose a course that offers real skills for real jobs. This is not plan B, it's your plan A. And your future education is a choice away at a college near you.
Welcome to Dumfries and Galloway College's Virtual Open Day. We hope you're all staying safe and well and we are looking forward to the new academic year starting in just a few weeks time. Of course applications are still open which is why we're here today. We've got some great information for you to help you decide which course is right for you to apply for. In the next few minutes you will be able to watch an interview with the curriculum manager for the area you are interested in. This will be followed by Q&A videos for admissions and funding. We hope you find all the information you need in the following videos, but if not, please email info at umgal.ac.uk and we will answer any questions you have. Or if you need specific help with the application process or course related information, please email admissions at dumgal.ac.uk. Today could be the day you apply to start your new chapter and we're looking forward to welcoming you to Dumfries and Galloway College. Please welcome Maggie Hall, the Curriculum Manager for Creative Industries, who's on the line. Hi Maggie. Hi Steve. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm good today. That's great. Maggie, could you tell us a bit about yourself and your department, please? Yes, I can, Steve. So um, my name is Maggie Hall. I'm the Curriculum Manager for Creative Industries at Dumfries and Galloway College. So I joined the department about a year and a half ago. Um, I'm lucky enough to work with a fantastic team of um, lecturers. They're all practicing, qualified specialists in their, their various fields. Um, I talk a bit about myself. So I'm also a practicing artist. I have a contemporary arts focus. Um, most recently, I had an exhibition at Carlisle Cathedral, which some of the staff and students attended. Um, I did a master's in fine arts sculpture um, previously, and recently, probably about a year ago now, I finished my master's in leadership and management. And I decided to do that because I, I wanted some career change or development and also wanted to further myself in education. So within the department, we have um, different strands for creative industries. So we have visual communication, which is graphic design and moving image. We've got art and design and we've got photography and we've got a range of different levels of um, courses as well. So there are lots of progression opportunities through our programs. Um, really, we have an offer to sue any learner um, at any level or, or starting point. So if someone isn't really sure whether a career in creative industries is for them, what, what could you suggest to them? Okay, well, there's, um, there's some different options there, there Steve. So um, I would say to do some research as well, because you might be surprised at what you find um, out about the creative industries as a, as a career path. So, for example, you could look at Discover um, Creative Careers, which is a, a web tool you could use. So you can put in your interests, what you like, and that will link it to a role in creative industries. Um, we've also got courses you could look at. So our foundation studies, I, talk, I spoke about the three strands that we have before. Our foundation studies in creative industries explores all of those three strands. Um, so again, visual communication, art and design and photography. So it's a taster of all those possibilities and the ways those courses might overlap. We've also got evening classes that are currently being developed and short courses, so do look out um, for those. So they should be um, starting off next um, academic year. And also do speak to us in the department as well. Contact the college and, and do speak to us because we've got a range of specialists to, to help and advise who are, who are already um, practising in, the, in their different fields as well. That's super. And what, what opportunities for further study are there in the in the field? OK, so I, I kind of began to talk about the suite of um, different levels of courses that we 
that we have. Um, so we start, we've got the foundation studies, we've got two new courses starting for, for schools provision. So they're in photography and animation. And um, then we go up to the level six qualifications um, in um, we've still got availability on those courses as well throughout, but I do especially have a look at the, the visual communication and photography offer in that as well. We then go up to um, HNC, HND qualification. So there is clear progression through our courses. It's an excellent suite of courses um, from if you've got no qualifications at all and just a keen interest. Um, to the higher level qualifications, which might be your stepping stone for either university or for employment. And speaking of employment, what, although it's a vast area, what are the mm -hmm. kind of career possibilities for students uh, progressing out of creative industries courses? Yeah, so I think, and you're right, it is a, a vast area, so you, you, you're not really necessarily to always talking about an A to B journey. Here, um, I would say it's a web of possibilities, really, with creative industries, but that offers a lot of flexibility and, and, and change within that as well. So those skills you could apply to, to many different roles within creative industries. And um, so, you know, things, in, you know, obvious roles include graphic designer, photographer, freelance artist, um, an animator. But even within those options, um, you can break them down further. So what kind of photographer would you potentially look at look at being? There's lots of overlap between these professions. I would like to say as well that I think it's a really exciting time to get involved in creative industries. Um, it's one of the biggest growth sectors in the UK. Um, do a bit of research, it'll, it'll indicate that for you. Um, I've recently read that um, there's expected to be over 900,000 new jobs, that's new jobs in the creative industry sector as well, um, by 2030. That's amazing, yeah. Could you tell us a bit about the yeah. careers that some previous students have successfully gone into? Do you have any examples to hand? Yeah, we, I do. Um, so we've got um, we've got students that are working, for example, in Hong Kong doing animation work. Um, so again, I think creative industries is very broad broad field. It's um, it's global. It's a global occupation. So if you were wanting to move or explore looking at other possibilities, that's something that you can do. Um, also, we've got artists that are practicing in Dumf around the Dumfries and Galloway area. A lot of them tend to set themselves up as um, freelance artists. Um, some of the artists that are, have started with us are already um, working in various fields, so as wedding photographers and things, and then they might want to come on and do do our courses as well. So there is an overlap, um, and freelance artists, say for example, in ceramics as well. And um, but it really, it really is 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 vast, and we've got a lot of good success stories as well in there. Super. And if you're actually already working in the creative industries, what what sort of things could the college offer then? Yeah, so I mean, I kind of started to mention a bit there that, yeah, we've, we've got practicing artists and professionals um, who do join us um, and they join us for various reasons. So they might want um, to get the formal qualifications to go with that experience that they've got. They might want to enhance their skills or build networks. And so we, we do get a lot of um, practicing professionals. Um, we also have got a new blended learning HNC in photography that's new this year. And that's set up really for that purpose. It's a full time route for those that might not access or might not be able to access education in the normal way. So due to different work commitments, etc., they that might be a, a good option for people. Yeah. And given the fact that that's completely online, that brings us on to the subject of Mm -hmm. What difference will this lockdown make to the next session? Yeah, so at least at the, the beginning of next academic year, I would say that, you know, you're, you're going to be creating some of your your creative work from home. Um, but we've got an exceptionally talented team of tutors who are going to ensure that none of your learning is going to be lost on that programme of study. 
Um, so due to their backgrounds, they've got really strong, um, innovative and creative thinking skills. And they're also skills that you're going to be learning while you're on our courses with us. Um, it's my belief that um, creative and innovative thinking skills are going to benefit any individual um, really within, within any role. Um, and the staff as well have done some little mini videos for you um, so they can they can um, have a chat about or show you who they are, what they do and um, give you a bit more information about the, the specialisms as well. I was going to bring up the subject of these videos because your lecturing staff have really gone to town here. They've, <laughs> they've, they've given me a whole box set's worth of introduction videos. <laughs> So, I'd like to hear it. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us in the live stream, and uh, let's now watch season one of the Creative Industries Lecturers <laughs> introduction videos, say. and that will be followed by our student advice video selection. So, thanks again for joining us in the stream, Maggie. Wonderful. Thanks very much for having me, Steve. No problem. Bye for now. Can I still apply for a college course? We are still accepting applications. Courses are filling up fast though, so we recommend you apply straight away. How do I apply? Apply online at dumgal.ac.uk. Use the search tools to look for the course you are interested in and then click the apply now button. How many courses can I apply for? You can only apply for one full-time course. If you change your mind about your course choice, you would need to withdraw your application and submit a new one. If I'm awaiting grades, what should I put on my application form? In the qualification section on the application form, list the exams you will be sitting and mark the results as pending. I don't have my own email address. Can I use a family member's? It is preferable to have your own email address. If you are a winter leaver, don't use your school email address as you will no longer be able to use it once you leave school. How will my application be considered when I haven't had an interview? Offers will be made based on applications only at this current time. Please ensure all sections are completed correctly to give you the best chance of being accepted. When do I find out if I have a place on the course? All applications received from April onward will be sent an offer email at the beginning of the next month after the application is submitted. What is a conditional offer? A conditional offer means you either have to pass the qualifications you are working towards, provide evidence of existing qualifications or a reference. Your offer will explain what your condition is. What is the waiting list? All courses have limited spaces. Once the course is full, applicants are put on a waiting list. If a place becomes available, we will notify you straight away. How do I find out about funding? For SCQF levels 4 to 6, a funding link will be emailed to you. Or for SCQF level 7 to 8, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency. When is my induction? Inductions take place approximately one week prior to courses starting. Your induction may be a virtual one, but you are still expected to attend. When will I get my timetable? You will receive your timetable as well as any other relevant information either on your induction day or by email. You may also receive a temporary bus pass if this is applicable. The admissions team are here to help Monday to Friday 8.45 to 4.30. If you have any other questions please email admissions at dumbgal.ac.uk. Attending college may mean you are eligible for funding. To find out, you should apply as soon as possible once you have been offered a place on your course. In case you are unsure of what to do next, here's a few of our most frequently asked questions to help you get started. How do I apply for funding? For SCQF Level 4 to 6 courses, you will be emailed a link to the online application when you are offered a place on a course. It is essential that you check your email regularly as this is how we will communicate. What if my course is SCQF Level 7 or 8? For SCQF Level 7 to 8 courses, 
you can apply to the Student Awards Agency online at sas.gov.uk. What information do I need to activate my online CAMS account? You will need your student reference number, which we will provide in our activation email. You will have to create a password. Keep a note of this, as you will need it to access your account throughout the academic year. When should I apply? You should apply as soon as you have been offered a place on the course. If you don't get on the course you want, you can contact us and we will change or cancel your application. You should note that your application cannot progress and will not be considered complete until all the evidence is received. What happens after I submit my application? We will acknowledge receipt of your application by email. The email will also remind you of any evidence you still have to submit before we can assess your application. How will I find out how much I'm entitled to? If your application is successful, you will receive an award notice telling you how much you will receive. It will also contain a payment schedule telling you how much your payments are and when instalments are due. Usually this is fortnightly instalments. What if my funding application isn't successful? If your application is refused, you will receive an email from the college outlining the reason for refusal. The student funding team are here to help. Monday to Friday, 8.45 to 4.30. The team can be contacted by email on studentfunding at dumgal.ac.uk. For more detailed funding information, please visit the finance and funding page at dumgal.ac.uk. What's more important than a choice about your future? And what if your opportunity was right here? Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you want to be. And whenever you're ready, choose a course that offers real skills for real jobs. This is not plan B, it's your plan A. And your future education is a choice away at a college near you.
Welcome to Dumfries and Galloway College's Virtual Open Day. We hope you're all staying safe and well and we are looking forward to the new academic year starting in just a few weeks time. Of course applications are still open which is why we're here today. We've got some great information for you to help you decide which course is right for you to apply for. In the next few minutes you will be able to watch an interview with the curriculum manager for the area you are interested in. This will be followed by Q&A videos for admissions and funding. We hope you find all the information you need in the following videos, but if not, please email info at dumgal.ac.uk and we will answer any questions you have.
or if you need specific help with the application process or course related information, please email admissions at dumgal.ac.uk. Today could be the day you apply to start your new chapter and we're looking forward to welcoming you to Dumfries and Galloway College. Okay, so I'm Julia MacDonald. I'm the curriculum leader for health and social services in Princess Trust. Princess Trust programme is, is separate. It's not a full time programme and it's not in the prospectus and you don't apply for it online. The other courses I run are access to nursing. So if you've been out of education for a while, there's the access to nursing course. If you want to be a social worker, we've got HNC social services. We're also running HNC care and administrative practice. So if you've got a couple of hires and fancy going into nursing but haven't got in this year, then that would be the course for you. We have a health and social care practice course and that runs at Stranraer and Dumfries and you get your full SVQ too and an, an NPA, a National Progression Award in Reablement. And we, the Access to Nursing course also runs in both campuses, both in Dumfries and Stranraer. Um, we have a health and social care theory course. So if you're a current practitioner and want to get enough qualifications to go into HNC or are looking for promotion, then health and social care theory would be the course for you. Um, and if you're a mature student and you've been out of education for a while and you haven't got enough qualifications to get into university to maybe study social sciences, so psychology, sociology, our swap access to humanities course is brand new this year and it's a really good course and um, quite challenging but if you want to go to university that would be the course for you um they're all at scqf level six all the courses are scqf level six or scqf level seven for hnc i so think it, that's all we've got if you're not actually sure about whether you'd want to do health and social studies is there some sort of introductory thing that you could do that would give you an idea if you had an interest in it? If you had an interest in health and social studies then um, it might be the school's foundation apprenticeship program uh, that only runs at Dumfries. That's the only one that we've got. Every, again it's at level six though so you'd have to meet the entry criteria unless you're a mature student and haven't been in education for a while and then the wider access programs would be the ones for you. The uh, University of the West of Scotland runs an First Steps to Nursing programme um, and they count that as a hire. So if somebody wanted to go to UWS to sort of break themselves in gently, it's a nine week um, course and it's all done, being done online just now. I know there's a lot of them, but just the sort yep. of example uh, jobs that you could get at the end of an HSS course. Yep. So if you uh, have done one of our courses, the HNCs, HNC social services, you would probably go direct to being a practitioner and you would probably be a senior care worker. So that could be in a care home or you could be running um, a care service where it's home care that you're running. Um, HNC care and administrative practice, that course is changing, but we, have, we will have it ready for you um, in August. Um, that would get you into first year nursing or it could leave you as a practitioner. You could go and work in a doctor's surgery, for instance, in reception, in x-ray, in a reception in a small um, hospital, a cottage hospital, something like that, or be one of the admin people uh, in the likes of Dimitris and Galloway Royal Infirmary. Um, most of the uh, SVQ level courses, that's you, you're going out to be a practitioner. And then if you wanted to improve that, you would go on to do the HNC. So there's progression from the social care theory to HNC or to university or from the a practice. It would be going into your following your career path and going into a job, really. OK, and then when I was speaking to Alan earlier, we spoke about uh, the current coronavirus situation. Is there any what, what's the impact on the courses of the current situation? Current situation is that students in health and social care are not able to go out on placement just now. Um, that may change if a vaccine becomes available. And we're currently negotiating with a uh, Scottish Qualifications Authority to see if we can use our brand spanking new care hub to do simulation role play or have other people who are lower risk 
and our students can practice on 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 those people in a safe environment. So we're getting our way around um, making sure that the practice is is correct. Um, the other thing is, if you currently work in health and social care, then you could use that as your placement, and that would save any kind of issue at all about taking a student out in placement. So try looking for a job in health and social care first, back up with, with our courses. Hi, well, I've managed to get Julia by audio. So Julia, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Steve. Yeah, we've got a few questions for you, additional okay. to the ones in the short film there. Um, there are, this question is, I need National 5 Maths and Higher English to get into university. Are these on any of your courses? Unfortunately, they're not this year, no. But if you're going to a particular university course such as social work, then the course for you is access to humanities. And that has psychology, sociology, a bit of maths and a bit of English. And the universities have agreed to take those as the entry criteria. It's a wider access programme. And I think it'll be a really popular course this year. So if they're thinking about that, that's the course to go to. That's great. I have another one here. I have a criminal record. Will that mean I cannot work in care? Not necessarily. It depends how long ago it was and what it was that happened at the time. Um, we're always looking to give people second chances. So it doesn't mean that you're barred from, from working with a vulnerable groups. Again, I say it, we would take each case individually and it would just depend what, what was there. Okay. And there's a a question here, I have entry criteria for university. Can I come on your access to humanities course anyway? Unfortunately not, no, that's one of the stipulations. Um, if they're old qualifications though, so if you've had your hires more than five years ago, then yes, you could come to the access to humanities. So as long as it was more than five years ago that you got those entry criteria, then yes, you could come to the humanities. If it was last year, however, unfortunately not. Okay, and uh, here's another. I'm nearly 16 years old and want to work in the care sector. Can I come on your health and social care practice course? Again, we've got age restrictions for that. So you would be best doing health and social care theory this year and doing health and social care practice next year. Usually they like people to be as near to 18 years old as possible when working in health and social care. So health and social care practice if you're 16 and, and meet the entry criteria. And here's another. I'm a college student already studying beauty at higher level. Mm. Can I progress to one of your courses? Yes, of course you can. Um, beauty contains quite a lot of anatomy and physiology. So if you're interested in doing that in healthcare, Yes, you can progress to one of our courses, as long as you've got a positive progressing learner reference and pass your course. That's great. And I've got another one here. I'm a student mm -hmm. studying National 5 Social Sciences this year. Because of COVID-19, I may not achieve all of my units on my programme. Does this mean I can't come back next year? No, it doesn't mean you can't come back. Um, we're taking each case individually. And we'll know how hard you've been working all this year. So we'll look at your your what you have passed individually and see whether we can get you into one of the courses for next year as well. We don't want to lose you. You've been studying hard and working hard over this challenging time. Well, that's great, Julia. I think we've come to the end of the, the questions that we have here. So uh, glad we got you back on, at least in the sound way. Yeah, sound uh, wave. <laughs> and we have... We have a short video selection about applying for college and funding now. So let's thank Julia again for your time. And thank uh, you. we'll speak to you later. Yeah, we'll do. Thanks, Steve. Bye. Bye for now. If you're looking for a career that will make a difference in the community, come and study at Dumfries and Galloway College. Our Health and Social Services Department offers a first class education in social services, social sciences, health and social care, care and nursing, as well as a dedicated hires programme. The Police and Galloway College offers obviously a wide range of curriculums. I specialise in the social subjects. We are lucky here to have, you know, such a, a wide range. Within classrooms as well, there's also a very low student to lecture ratio, which again allows lecturers to spend more quality one-to-one -one time with students. 
um, particularly where extra support is required. With well-nurtured links with local employers, students are also able to access real-life work experience in their placement modules. I came to do this course because I aspire to be a mental health nurse and uh, this uh, will give me the qualifications that I need and help me go towards that. Well, I think the facilities are great. Obviously we have the computers where we can you know, do our work, we have um, access to printers, um, we also have access to the staff in the learning zone, they're quite good at helping you out if you're stuck on essays or anything like that, they're quite happy to give you that extra hand. My future career I'm hoping to be a paramedic and this is one of the courses when I uh, like googled what you needed to be a paramedic and this is for one of them so hopefully this is the first step to all the rest of it. My advice would be that students apply as soon as possible, as early as they can to avoid any disappointment and equally it would be my advice to do a bit of research around their subject area and their um, career aspirations um, so that obviously they're well equipped for interviews to increase their chances of gaining a place on their desired course. For more information about our full course offering in Health and Social Services, visit www.dumgal.ac.uk and apply. Can I still apply for a college course? We are still accepting applications. Courses are filling up fast though, so we recommend you apply straight away. How do I apply? Apply online at dumgal.ac.uk. Use the search tools to look for the course you are interested in and then click the apply now button. How many courses can I apply for? You can only apply for one full-time course. If you change your mind about your course choice, you would need to withdraw your application and submit a new one. If I'm awaiting grades, what should I put on my application form? In the qualification section on the application form, list the exams you will be sitting and mark the results as pending. I don't have my own email address, can I use a family member's? It is preferable to have your own email address. If you are a winter leaver, don't use your school email address as you will no longer be able to use it once you leave school. How will my application be considered when I haven't had an interview? Offers will be made based on applications only at this current time. Please ensure all sections are completed correctly to give you the best chance of being accepted. When do I find out if I have a place on the course? All applications received from April onward will be sent an offer email at the beginning of the next month after the application is submitted. What is a conditional offer? A conditional offer means you either have to pass the qualifications you are working towards, provide evidence of existing qualifications or a reference. Your offer will explain what your condition is. What is the waiting list? All courses have limited spaces. Once the course is full, applicants are put on a waiting list. If a place becomes available, we will notify you straight away. How do I find out about funding? For SCQF Levels 4 to 6, a funding link will be emailed to you. Or for SCQF Level 7 to 8, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency. When is my induction? Inductions take place approximately one week prior to courses starting. Your induction may be a virtual one, but you are still expected to attend. When will I get my timetable? You will receive your timetable as well as any other relevant information either on your induction day or by email. You may also receive a temporary bus pass if this is applicable. The admissions team are here to help Monday to Friday 8.45 to 4.30. If you have any other questions please email admissions at dumgal.ac.uk. Attending college may mean you are eligible for funding. To find out, you should apply as soon as possible once you have been offered a place on your course. In case you are unsure of what to do next, here's a few of our most frequently asked questions to help you get started. How do I apply for funding? For SCQF Level 4-6 to six courses, you will be emailed a link to the online application when you are offered a place on a course. 
It is essential that you check your email regularly as this is how we will communicate. What if my course is SCQF level 7 or 8? For SCQF level 7 to 8 courses, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency online at sas.gov.uk. What information do I need to activate my online CAMS account? You will need your student reference number, which we will provide in our activation email. You will have to create a password. Keep a note of this, as you will need it to access your account throughout the academic year. When should I apply? You should apply as soon as you have been offered a place on the course. If you don't get on the course you want, you can contact us and we will change or cancel your application. You should note that your application cannot progress and will not be considered complete until all the evidence is received. What happens after I submit my application? We will acknowledge receipt of your application by email. The email will also remind you of any evidence you still have to submit before we can assess your application. How will I find out how much I'm entitled to? If your application is successful, you will receive an award notice telling you how much you will receive. It will also contain a payment schedule telling you how much your payments are and when instalments are due. Usually, this is fortnightly instalments. What if my funding application isn't successful? If your application is refused, you will receive an email from the college outlining the reason for refusal. The student funding team are here to help, Monday to Friday, 8.45 to 4.30. The team can be contacted by email on studentfunding at dumgal.ac.uk. For more detailed funding information, please visit the finance and funding page at dumgal.ac.uk. What's more important than a choice about your future? And what if your opportunity was right here? Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you want to be. And whenever you're ready, choose a course that offers real skills for real jobs. This is not plan B, it's your plan A. And your future education is a choice away at a college near you.
welcome to Dumfries and Galloway College's Virtual Open Day. We hope you're all staying safe and well and we are looking forward to the new academic year starting in just a few weeks time. Of course applications are still open which is why we're here today. We've got some great information for you to help you decide which course is right for you to apply for. In the next few minutes you will be able to watch an interview with the curriculum manager for the area you are interested in. This will be followed by Q&A videos for admissions and funding. We hope you find all the information you need in the following videos, but if not, please email info at dumgal.ac.uk and we will answer any questions you have. Or if you need specific help with the application process or course related information, please email admissions at dumgal.ac.uk. Today could be the day you apply to start your new chapter and we're looking forward to welcoming you to Dumfries and Galloway College. Joyce. Hi Stephen, how, are you, how are you today? Not bad, how's yourself? I'm very well. Good. I'm very Good. well, thank you. Joyce, you? Yeah, great, yeah. We're, we're on again. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind telling us a bit about yourself and your department, please? Hi Stephen, thanks for welcoming me on. Um, I would just like to firstly say um, I hope everybody is safe, uh, current students and new students that are currently embarking on applying for a course here at Dumfries and Galloway College. I'm the curriculum manager for hairdressing and beauty in, bo in both campuses. Campus across at Stranraer and the main campus in Dumfries. We offer a wide range of hairdressing and beauty courses within our portfolio. We currently offer from level five to level six within our hairdressing portfolio. And in our beauty portfolio, we have level five to level seven. I'll go back to hairdressing for just a few moments and take you through what we offer here. We have uh, national certificates at level five and six. We have modern apprenticeships and we have S SVQs that are um, work-based assess uh, assessment um, qualifications. In beauty, uh, we have national certificate courses, level five, six, and then we move into HNC, HND. Uh, we're not currently offering our H HND course this year um, due to obviously what's currently happening. Uh, we were in talks with some of the students and other colleges to see if we could provide um, further information and clarity. But due to the COVID-19, it's became quite difficult to obviously um, get this up and going. That's great. Can you tell us uh, throughout the courses, what sort of treatments will the, the students be learning? Our level five uh, programme in hairdressing gives the students a good platform and a sound grounding of um, knowledge and understanding of basic hairdressing skills. So they would do shampooing, blow drying, they would learn a wee bit of cutting, which is our more technical and colouring units. So that's just, you know, a few units in there. Then they would progress from level five to level six and they would further um, enhance their skills through embarking and taking part in um, cutting, colouring, advanced cut and colour, colouring, correction work, colour correction work. There'll be long hair work, there'll be a bit of competition in there through um, total look um, in our hairdressing portfolio. And uh, I know you've mentioned COVID-19 and the fact we probably won't be back in the campus at the beginning of the session, we don't know, but in the two circumstances, how and where will practical treatments be taught? Due to COVID-19, obviously the, the college is planning three-phase return. So the first phase will be delivered virtual. Um, second phase will be where we um, will be a bit of virtual and we will also start to do some integration where we possibly can. And then phase three will be when we go back to face-to-face -to -face contact with our students. However, we are, with the current situation, staff are currently trying to set up videos of uh, practical teaching 
Um, so we'll do a bit of, you know, digital um, delivery with some videos to help us take our practical forward. Well, that's great. Can you tell us a bit about what career routes are available to students in Hair and Beauty? The career routes that are available in Hair and Beauty are obviously, um, going back to hairdressing, I'll start on hairdressing again. Um, hairdressing, um, you could... Um, with your level five qualification or level six qualification, you can move into a salon and work as a salon junior and progress through the salon until you become a fully fledged stylist um, with level five and level six. In beauty, uh, level five, level six, you would just continue your, your studies at college and then you could embark in careers such as opening your own salon, you could work in cruise ships, you could work in a spa. Locally, there's a few new spas opened up, so um, hopefully um, there'll be employment there as well. That's super. And that covers sort of career routes. And um, what sort of opportunities for further study are there? Further study, um, if you're currently working in a salon at the moment, um, you could do um, VQ in the placement if you don't currently hold a, a formal qualification in either hairdressing or beauty. We do have a, an evening class that we run in National Certificate um, in Beauty. So you could further your career by joining, obviously, an evening class. Um, we are currently looking at our portfolio to add in some hairdressing um, courses to our portfolio for the evening and um, additional work that people can come back into college and upskill there. So these will be added to our portfolio as we progress through. Well, that's excellent. Uh, well, I'd like to thank you for joining us, Joyce. Uh, People can continue to ask questions using the hashtag AskDGCollege and we'll get those questions passed on to you. I understand your hairdressing staff have been working on a short film. Uh, I think they've discovered TikTok. So <laughs> I think the hairdressing and beauty team have worked exceptionally hard. I would like to thank them for getting all this together through TikTok videos um, and just, you know, gathering statements from um, past and present students of how successful these students have been in their career paths so far. So I'd like to just say a big thank you to the staff for helping us set out our virtual week. Um, keep applying for our courses. We do have um, lots of uh, courses out there to apply for. Um, they're well subscribed, however, our courses do move, you know, people's circumstances change um, and places may become available. So keep applying um, and for any further information, contact the college um, website. Well, that's great. Thanks, well, yeah. Thanks for coming on the stream today and let's, let's have a look at that TikTok video that your uh, staff have been working on. But thanks again, Joyce. Thanks, Stephen. Bye for Thank now. Thank you. Take care. Take you care. too. Bye, Bye. Bye. Stay safe. Can I still apply for a college course? We are still accepting applications. Courses are filling up fast though, so we recommend you apply straight away. How do I apply? Apply online at dumgal.ac.uk. Use the search tools to look for the course you are interested in and then click the apply now button. How many courses can I apply for? You can only apply for one full-time course. If you change your mind about your course choice, you would need to withdraw your application and submit a new one. If I am awaiting grades, what should I put on my application form? In the qualification section on the application form, list the exams you will be sitting and mark the results as pending. I don't have my own email address. Can I use a family member's? It is preferable to have your own email address. If you are a winter leaver, don't use your school email address as you will no longer be able to use it once you leave school. How will my application be considered when I haven't had an interview? Offers will be made based on applications only at this current time. Please ensure all sections are completed correctly to give you the best chance of being accepted. 
When do I find out if I have a place on the course? All applications received from April onward will be sent an offer email at the beginning of the next month after the application is submitted. What is a conditional offer? A conditional offer means you either have to pass the qualifications you are working towards, provide evidence of existing qualifications or a reference. Your offer will explain what your condition is. What is the waiting list? All courses have limited spaces. Once the course is full, applicants are put on a waiting list. If a place becomes available, we will notify you straight away. How do I find out about funding? For SCQF levels 4 to 6, a funding link will be emailed to you. Or for SCQF level 7 to 8, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency. When is my induction? Inductions take place approximately one week prior to courses starting. Your induction may be a virtual one, but you are still expected to attend. When will I get my timetable? You will receive your timetable as well as any other relevant information either on your induction day or by email. You may also receive a temporary bus pass if this is applicable. The admissions team are here to help Monday to Friday 8.45 to 4.30. If you have any other questions, please email admissions at dumbgal.ac.uk. Attending college may mean you are eligible for funding. To find out, you should apply as soon as possible once you have been offered a place on your course. In case you are unsure of what to do next, here's a few of our most frequently asked questions to help you get started. How do I apply for funding? For SCQF Level 4 to 6 courses, you will be emailed a link to the online application when you are offered a place on a course. It is essential that you check your email regularly as this is how we will communicate. What if my course is SCQF Level 7 or 8? For SCQF Level 7 to 8 courses, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency online at sas.gov.uk. What information do I need to activate my online CAMS account? You will need your student reference number, which we will provide in our activation email. You will have to create a password. Keep a note of this, as you will need it to access your account throughout the academic year. When should I apply? You should apply as soon as you have been offered a place on the course. If you don't get on the course you want, you can contact us and we will change or cancel your application. You should note that your application cannot progress and will not be considered complete until all the evidence is received. What happens after I submit my application? We will acknowledge receipt of your application by email. The email will also remind you of any evidence you still have to submit before we can assess your application. How will I find out how much I'm entitled to? If your application is successful, you will receive an award notice telling you how much you will receive. It will also contain a payment schedule telling you how much your payments are and when instalments are due. Usually this is fortnightly instalments. What if my funding application isn't successful? If your application is refused, you will receive an email from the college outlining the reason for refusal. The student funding team are here to help. Monday to Friday, 8.45 to 4.30. The team can be contacted by email on studentfunding at dumgal.ac.uk. For more detailed funding information, please visit the finance and funding page at dumgal.ac.uk. What's more important than a choice about your future? And what if your opportunity was right here? Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you want to be. And whenever you're ready, choose a course that offers real skills for real jobs. This is not plan B, it's your plan A. And your future education is a choice away at a college near you.
welcome to Dumfries and Galloway College's Virtual Open Day. We hope you're all staying safe and well and we are looking forward to the new academic year starting in just a few weeks time. Of course applications are still open which is why we're here today. We've got some great information for you to help you decide which course is right for you to apply for. In the next few minutes you will be able to watch an interview with the curriculum manager for the area you are interested in. This will be followed by Q&A videos for admissions and funding. We hope you find all the information you need in the following videos, but if not, please email info at dumgal.ac.uk and we will answer any questions you have. Or if you need specific help with the application process or course related information, please email admissions at dumgal.ac.uk. Today could be the day you apply to start your new chapter and we're looking forward to welcoming you to Dumfries and Galloway College. So we're in the early education and childcare section of the day. Please welcome Eolan Davis, who's the curriculum manager for early education and childcare. Hi, Eolan. Hi, Stephen. Thanks Hi. very much for inviting me to uh, this session. Um, just to tell you a bit about myself, I started working at the college in 2007 when I moved into the region and I had to leave my primary school teaching post. However, I took up a post as a lecturer at the college and it's that good, I've worked here ever since. For early education and childcare, eh, we will run four different full-time early learning and childcare programmes, as well as two different part-time programmes which we deliver directly to schools. Our introductory pro programme called Play, Work and Childcare at SCQF Level 5 enables students to gain a National Progression Award and on successful completion of the programme, students can progress to our NC and Early Education and Childcare SCQF Level 6. The NC programme enables students to exit to employment as a support worker or progress on to our HNC and Childhood Practice at SCQF Level 7. These three programmes are offered at both Dumfries and Stranra campus and offer a clear progression pathway or direct entry at any level as long as the applicants meet the entry criteria for each programme. We also have a brand new programme on offer uh, for next year running out our Dumfries campus called Access to Childhood Practice, which is a mixture of both SQF Level 5 and Level 6 units. The course is part of the Scottish Wider Access programme and appeals to adult learners who are returning to education for having a break from it for a wee while and may not have the direct entry criteria for our NC or our HNC programmes, but who show capacity to work at this level. There are other entry categories to the programme and more details of this can be found by contacting the college and having a discussion with either myself or one of our tutors. And if someone was unsure about whether a career in early education childcare was for them, what would you suggest to them? Well, well depending on an individual circumstances, a personal, personal preference, preference, confidence levels, and in line with the qualifications they may already have, I would certainly recommend to consider either the Play, Work and Childcare programme at SCQF Level 5 or the NC in Early Education and Childcare at Level 6. Both programmes include work placement experience as well as academic theory that informs the practical aspects of working with children and young people. If uncertain which programme to apply for, we are happy to discuss the best option for each individual and advise them on a one-to-one -one basis over an email at present and then we can maybe take it forward and talk to them if necessary which programme may suit them best. That's great and if you're uh Studying a course, what opportunities are there for further study beyond beyond the college? Well, there are opportunities to continue further study both academic eh, both academically and also if a student leaves and gains employment and wishes to study part time while they are working. Students who complete an HNC in childhood practice can progress to university, 
there are different pathways possible depending on their own career aspirations. There's potential to progress to the HNC um, from the HNC, sorry, in childhood practice directly on to the second year of the BA in childhood studies at the University of West of Scotland to gain a degree. There are also two optional paths for progressing to primary education at Glasgow University. Again, depending on an individual's prior higher qualifications, there is the potential to progress either on to the first year or the second year of the MA honours in the primary education with teaching certificate programme. There are also other options for further study for students who exit to employment after successful attainment of either an NC or an HNC um, from the college programme. There is the SBQ route, that's the Scottish Vocational Qualification route, which offers further study while working. And it is possible to work right through from SVQ level 2, 3, right up to degree level and obtain a childhood practice degree. That's great. And what are the career possibilities for someone who's achieving a qualification? Well, due to the large investment by the Scottish Government in the early year sector, uh, to increase the number of hours available for early learning and care provision for young children, there has been a, an increase in employment opportunities and jobs available. So we are at present a growth market. The opportunities vary from being a support worker to an early years practitioner or manager of a setting in a range of different employment contexts, such as nurseries, day centres, playgroups. Some of our students go on to start up their own business within the sector, either starting up as a childminder or developing their own nursery establishment. The HNC is a popular pathway to primary education and teaching for many of our students. However, there are also supporting organisations surrounding the early years sector that offer career pathways such as Early Years Scotland, the Scottish Social Services Council, or they may wish to go on to supporting families and children in the community. We also know that some of our students go on to become work-based assessors that work at the college and for other training organisations and also lecturers at college and university. That's great. And what Can you tell us a bit about what difference the lockdown is going to make for the, the session that's coming up? Well, due to the government guidelines, we won't have access to the college initially. And so we will be teaching and learning differently, more virtually. Our talented staff are preparing online learning in a variety of ways to enhance the student experience, which I am more than confident will be quite exciting and very engaging and motivating. We do not know what the position will be at present at the start of term regarding work placements, but we are planning to deliver learning in such a way that should there be a delay in students going out eh, onto their work placement experiences, they will be very well prepared for this with much of the theory already delivered to ensure a successful year ahead. That's really interesting. Well, uh, thanks for your time today. If any questions okay. come in using the hashtag AskDGCollege, we'll be, ensure to, we'll be sure to pass them on to you and then get back to the people afterwards. Thanks, Stephen. But thanks for your time. Bye. Bye for now. Bye. Can I still apply for a college course? We are still accepting applications. Courses are filling up fast though, so we recommend you apply straight away. How do I apply? Apply online at dumgal.ac.uk. Use the search tools to look for the course you are interested in and then click the apply now button. How many courses can I apply for? You can only apply for one full-time course. If you change your mind about your course choice, you would need to withdraw your application and submit a new one. If I'm awaiting grades, what should I put on my application form? In the qualification section on the application form, list the exams you will be sitting and mark the results as pending. I don't have my own email address. Can I use a family member's? It is preferable to have your own email address. If you are a winter leaver, don't use your school email address as you will no longer be able to use it once you leave school. How will my application be considered when I haven't had an interview? 
Offers will be made based on applications only at this current time. Please ensure all sections are completed correctly to give you the best chance of being accepted. When do I find out if I have a place on the course? All applications received from April onward will be sent an offer email at the beginning of the next month after the application is submitted. What is a conditional offer? A conditional offer means you either have to pass the qualifications you are working towards, provide evidence of existing qualifications or a reference. Your offer will explain what your condition is. What is the waiting list? All courses have limited spaces. Once the course is full, applicants are put on a waiting list. If a place becomes available, we will notify you straight away. How do I find out about funding? For SCQF levels 4 to 6, a funding link will be emailed to you. Or for SCQF level 7 to 8, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency. When is my induction? Inductions take place approximately one week prior to courses starting. Your induction may be a virtual one, but you are still expected to attend. When will I get my timetable? You will receive your timetable as well as any other relevant information either on your induction day or by email. You may also receive a temporary bus pass if this is applicable. The admissions team are here to help Monday to Friday 8.45 to 4.30. If you have any other questions, please email admissions at dumgal.ac.uk. Attending college may mean you are eligible for funding. To find out, you should apply as soon as possible once you have been offered a place on your course. In case you are unsure of what to do next, here's a few of our most frequently asked questions to help you get started. How do I apply for funding? For SCQF Level 4-6 to six courses, you will be emailed a link to the online application when you are offered a place on a course. It is essential that you check your email regularly as this is how we will communicate. What if my course is SCQF Level 7 or 8? For SCQF Level 7 to 8 courses, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency online at sas.gov.uk. What information do I need to activate my online CAMS account? You will need your student reference number, which we will provide in our activation email. You will have to create a password. Keep a note of this, as you will need it to access your account throughout the academic year. When should I apply? You should apply as soon as you have been offered a place on the course. If you don't get on the course you want, you can contact us and we will change or cancel your application. You should note that your application cannot progress and will not be considered complete until all the evidence is received. What happens after I submit my application? We will acknowledge receipt of your application by email. The email will also remind you of any evidence you still have to submit before we can assess your application. How will I find out how much I'm entitled to? If your application is successful, you will receive an award notice telling you how much you will receive. It will also contain a payment schedule telling you how much your payments are and when instalments are due. Usually this is fortnightly instalments. What if my funding application isn't successful? If your application is refused, you will receive an email from the college outlining the reason for refusal. The student funding team are here to help. Monday to Friday, 8.45 to 4.30. The team can be contacted by email on studentfunding at dumgal.ac.uk. For more detailed funding information, please visit the finance and funding page at dumgal.ac.uk. What's more important than a choice about your future? And what if your opportunity was right here? Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you want to be. And whenever you're ready, choose a course that offers real skills for real jobs. This is not plan B, it's your plan A. And your future education is a choice away at a college near you.
welcome to Dumfries and Galloway College's Virtual Open Day. We hope you're all staying safe and well and we are looking forward to the new academic year starting in just a few weeks time. Of course applications are still open which is why we're here today. We've got some great information for you to help you decide which course is right for you to apply for. In the next few minutes you will be able to watch an interview with the curriculum manager for the area you are interested in. This will be followed by Q&A videos for admissions and funding. We hope you find all the information you need in the following videos, but if not, please email info at dumgal.ac.uk and we will answer any questions you have. Or if you need specific help with the application process or course related information, please email admissions at dumgal.ac.uk. Today could be the day you apply to start your new chapter and we're looking forward to welcoming you to Dumfries and Galloway College. I'd like to welcome to the stream Robert Burns and Gillian Rose from Business and Computing. Hello, Good morning. Robert. Morning. Morning, everybody. I understand we'll have Gillian as audio only, but we'll we'll press on. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Morning. Could, could we start with Gillian? Could you tell us a wee bit about yourself and your department, please? Certainly. Thanks for inviting me, Steve. Um, good morning. I'm Gillian Rose. I'm the Curriculum Manager for the area of Business, Accounting and Computing. Personally, I've worked at the college for 17 years and my uh, background, I have a BA in business from a local university. In both the business and computing areas, we have courses running from levels four to eight. So if there is a course suitable for everyone, it's part of the team's job to make sure that you're placed on the right course, depending on your qualifications and life experiences. So please don't think that just because you maybe don't have many formal qualifications that you can't study the course that you want to, because there will be a course suitable for you. We are constantly making sure that our courses are cutting edge, are up to date, involve current working practices to make sure sure that you leave at the end of the year ready to put your learning into practice. We also have a number of pathways which if an individual wanted to go on to further study at university that is a possibility. We have great facilities at Dumfries and Galway College and throughout the year you will have interesting visits and talks from local employers, businesses so that you can, you can understand what's out there for you and how relevant your learning is. We have a very small team of highly skilled and really knowledgeable lecturers who will guide and support you throughout the year. They are constantly updating their practices so that they can deliver the most up-to-date teaching for you and you will build a great relationship with them throughout the year. Obviously, as Steve said earlier, due to the current situation, everybody has questions about what will happen to their studies. And despite the coronavirus situation, the college is continuing to make plans to teach. So what I can say is that we are following and will act upon advice from the Scottish Government as to when we can open our college doors again. However, I can reassure you that the college is continuing to make plans to teach in virtual ways, blended or face-to-face, -face, whichever the recommended way is. We have excellent and trained staff who are highly trained, ready to adjust their teaching to the situation. And again, they're already putting plans together for the new teaching year to help you reach your goals and ambitions. And obviously, I've asked um, Robert, who's kindly agreed to be here with us today. Um, Robert is a very knowledgeable lecturer in computing, so he's here to help answer any questions that you may have. That's great, Gillian. Can you tell us a wee bit about what jobs uh, you can apply for if you've completed an HND business? Certainly, an HND business opens a wide range of doors for you. Um, every business needs some degree of a business element. So even in hotels where people predominantly think that's hospitality, that's not the case. They need accounts, they need receptionists, they need 
marketing people. And our business courses, you will cover a wide range of business topics, for example, economics, law, accounting, enterprise, management of people. So you will leave the college with a good underpinning knowledge to go out there and ready to face the business world. That's great. And can you tell us if there's a work placement available in the accounting qualification? Yes, there is in the accounting qualification. Now, obviously, um, again, depending on the current situation, that may depend if it's possible or not. But hopefully, you know, by the time we come to the to the part of the academic year where the placement goes in place, you know, things will have settled down and that will be possible. That's great. And so moving to Robert, would you mind telling us a wee bit about yourself, please, and the, and the team you work in? Yes. Hi. Hi, Steve. Hi, everybody. Yes, my name is Robert Burns. I've been a lecturer at Dumfries and Galway College for nearly 25 years. Um, it's quite a busy department. There are five of us in total working in computing. And then you've just heard from Gillian there, our curriculum manager, who's uh, given a, a really good interview over that. But I'll concentrate here on computing. Um, for anybody interested in computing, and I would encourage everybody nowadays out there, because as you can see currently, just about every business is relying on uh, computing infrastructure at the moment, and we are using these to quite good effect. That's how I'm uh, able to come into your uh, house or wherever you're listening in from today. Um, we've got five courses on offer in computing, mainly in the stream of computer science at the moment. There's another little... Uh, shorter course available in cyber security for anybody who wants to uh, have a look at that one but the five courses are really there to cater for anybody that currently has an interest in computing we have a pure beginners one if you've got no experience whatsoever we'd still encourage you to consider computing and uh, think about that one right up to people who've maybe got some um, school qualifications on leaving or other qualifications, and it's not just about your qualifications. We look for people who've maybe got uh, interests or experience in computing. We can always uh, take you on board as well, you know, allow you to start a course at an appropriate level. And as I say, if you head along to the college um, website at dumbgal.ac.uk and just put computing into the search box at the top, you'll see our five courses. Um, as I say, nowadays, if you've got an interest in computing, I think it's probably now could probably be one of the best times to start studying computing and we'll be ready to uh, take you on board and look after you and get you moving in the right direction to secure a career for the future. So as I say, there's five there leading from the beginner's course right up to HND and beyond HND, we have I think 13 HND students currently with us this year and eight, nine of them actually now are applying to move on into third years at uh, university in the main. So it's certainly a, an opportunity here at the college. That's great. I have a question come in for you here, Robert, just an yeah. off-the-cuff one. Uh, is there any gaming or coding involved in any of the courses, or can I go into this after one of your courses? Well, you'll find as you start on the course, depending where you start, um, I suppose is the easiest way, but gaming does appear, but we're not a gaming a course or a computer science course and from the computer science uh, point of view you will experience a range of programming languages so coding does appear um, significantly to some extent but not the main part uh, certainly web development and web programming comes in and we uh, work a lot on that uh, as well so you'll see that appearing but there's a lot more to it i mean the courses are designed to get you started into computing. We, they're quite uh, broad ranging. They touch a lot of specialist areas to allow you to consider um, opportunities. I mean, at the moment, we have students who are hoping to continue their career beyond ours by taking their HNCs and HNDs and move into other areas such as cyber security, follow on to complete degrees in uh, computer science. And I've even heard one or two sort of discussing nowadays um, data science as possible routes forward as well. So it, the courses are designed to get you a start, especially if, you're, if you've not had any previous experience or you have limited experience, but to also give you opportunities to uh, progress forward into some of the more specialist areas. 
that's really good information about the careers you can move into. So, but supposing you're already working in computing, is there anything the college can offer for anyone who already works in a computing field? Yes, I mean we're always looking to uh, offer professional development to to individuals. In the main, at the moment, although this could change in the future, because obviously quite a few things are changing uh, at this moment in time in some ways, but our standard courses will be there. And within those standard courses, if we have um, spaces at various levels and we're offering subject areas or topics which would um, help somebody who's currently employed or allow them to extend their, their um, professional development or even um, start off in a new area that they've not yet addressed. Um, we can look at that and I think the thing to do there is if you have an idea of something that we could maybe help you with would be to probably in the first instance contact Gillian and say that I have this particular interest in a particular computing area. We could either let you join our full-time courses as a part-time member on that or if there is enough demand because Gillian would know if demand is coming in from a number of different organisations or um, businesses out there, we may actually be able to put on um, a course dedicated to that particular topic. Oh, thanks Robert. I've got a question coming for Gillian on the chat here. It is, Gillian, I'm a startup business. Is it possible to offer work experience to a student studying marketing and sales? Certainly, it's certainly something that we could look into. Um, if that person wanted to contact me direct, um, going back to just what Robert said, then you know we can certainly look at um, individual requirements. That's great. Well, I think we've reached the end. I'd like to thank you both for your time. Uh, have you got anything to add, Gillian? Is there? Yeah, um, thanks, Steve. If I can just finish by saying, you know, reiterating what Robert said, have a look at our website, see what courses are there. Um, we still have some places available um, on the HNC accounting, on the computing with digital media. We're also doing an exciting new course, Business with Travel and Tourism, over in the Nurshtunwar campus. And if anyone thinks of any questions after today's session, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Yeah, and just to add to that, if you do have questions, you can ask on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook with a hashtag AskDGCollege. So I'd like to thank you both for your time and uh, good to chat to you. And uh, we'll see you online sometime. Yeah. OK, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. 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 Can I still apply for a college course? We are still accepting applications. Courses are filling up fast though, so we recommend you apply straight away. How do I apply? Apply online at dumgal.ac.uk. Use the search tools to look for the course you are interested in and then click the apply now button. How many courses can I apply for? You can only apply for one full-time course. If you change your mind about your course choice, you would need to withdraw your application and submit a new one. If I'm awaiting grades, what should I put on my application form? In the qualification section on the application form, list the exams you will be sitting and mark the result as pending. I don't have my own email address. Can I use a family member's? It is preferable to have your own email address. If you are a winter leaver, don't use your school email address as you will no longer be able to use it once you leave school. How will my application be considered when I haven't had an interview? Offers will be made based on applications only at this current time. Please ensure all sections are completed correctly to give you the best chance of being accepted. When do I find out if I have a place on the course? All applications received from April onward will be sent an offer email at the beginning of the next month after the application is submitted. What is a conditional offer? A conditional offer means you either have to pass the qualifications you are working towards, provide evidence of existing qualifications or a reference. Your offer will explain what your condition is. What is the waiting list? All courses have limited spaces. Once the course is full, applicants are put on a waiting list. If a place becomes available, we will notify you straight away. How do I find out about funding? For SCQF levels 4 to 6, 
a funding link will be emailed to you. Or for SCQF level 7 to 8, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency. When is my induction? Inductions take place approximately one week prior to courses starting. Your induction may be a virtual one, but you are still expected to attend. When will I get my timetable? You will receive your timetable as well as any other relevant information either on your induction day or by email. You may also receive a temporary bus pass if this is applicable. The admissions team are here to help Monday to Friday 8.45 to 4.30. If you have any other questions please email admissions at dumbgal.ac.uk. Attending college may mean you are eligible for funding. To find out, you should apply as soon as possible once you have been offered a place on your course. In case you are unsure of what to do next, here's a few of our most frequently asked questions to help you get started. How do I apply for funding? For SCQF Level 4-6 to six courses, you will be emailed a link to the online application when you are offered a place on a course. It is essential that you check your email regularly as this is how we will communicate. What if my course is SCQF Level 7 or 8? For SCQF Level 7 to 8 courses, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency online at sas.gov.uk. What information do I need to activate my online CAMS account? You will need your student reference number, which we will provide in our activation email. You will have to create a password. Keep a note of this, as you will need it to access your account throughout the academic year. When should I apply? You should apply as soon as you have been offered a place on the course. If you don't get on the course you want, you can contact us and we will change or cancel your application. You should note that your application cannot progress and will not be considered complete until all the evidence is received. What happens after I submit my application? We will acknowledge receipt of your application by email. The email will also remind you of any evidence you still have to submit before we can assess your application. How will I find out how much I'm entitled to? If your application is successful, you will receive an award notice telling you how much you will receive. It will also contain a payment schedule telling you how much your payments are and when instalments are due. Usually this is fortnightly instalments. What if my funding application isn't successful? If your application is refused, you will receive an email from the college outlining the reason for refusal. The student funding team are here to help. Monday to Friday, 8.45 to 4.30. The team can be contacted by email on studentfunding at dumgal.ac.uk. For more detailed funding information, please visit the finance and funding page at dumgal.ac.uk. What's more important than a choice about your future? And what if your opportunity was right here? Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you want to be. And whenever you're ready, choose a course that offers real skills for real jobs. This is not plan B, it's your plan A. And your future education is a choice away at a college near you.
Welcome to Dumfries and Galloway College's Virtual Open Day. We hope you're all staying safe and well and we are looking forward to the new academic year starting in just a few weeks time. Of course applications are still open which is why we're here today. We've got some great information for you to help you decide which course is right for you to apply for. In the next few minutes you will be able to watch an interview with the curriculum manager for the area you are interested in. This will be followed by Q&A videos for admissions and funding. We hope you find all the information you need in the following videos, but if not, please email info at dumgal.ac.uk and we will answer any questions you have. Or if you need specific help with the application process or course related information, please email admissions at dumgal.ac.uk. Today could be the day you apply to start your new chapter and we're looking forward to welcoming you to Dumfries and Galloway College. Please welcome uh, Kevin Somerville, the Curriculum Manager of Sport and Hospitality, the stream. Welcome, Kevin. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having me on. No problem, Kevin. Would you mind telling us a bit about yourself and your department, please? Yep, yeah, so I'm Kevin Somerville, the Curriculum Manager for Hospitality and Sport and Fitness and also the Passport to College course. So in my department, um, we deliver hospitality courses which include professional cookery and hospitality operations. And we run professional cookery courses at level five and level six at both Stranraer and Dumfries campuses. And we, host, uh, we deliver hospitality operations at level six and HMC level um, at Dumfries campus. In terms of sport and fitness, we have pathways from level five all the way up to HND at level eight. Um, and at level seven, you can specialise in either coaching and developing sport or you can specialise in fitness, health and exercise. And we also have a specialist programme at level six for performance athletes. So that's for anybody in the region or out with the region, in fact, who is um, considered a talented athlete. And um, they can come and learn about um, employment and sport, but also key aspects for performance sport to try and enhance their um, opportunity to progress within their sport. And we also look after the Passport to College course, which is essentially a sort of taste or experience course at level three and level four, which enables you to try different departments within the college so you can make better choices for your career path. That's great. So if someone wasn't sure whether a career in sport or hospitality was for them, I know it's a broad area, but is there any advice you could give how to get started? I think one of the sort of key um, bits of advice I would give anyone who's looking to work in either sport and fitness or hospitality is to come and study because you get transferable skills. So even at the end of that course, if you decide that maybe hospitality or sport and fitness isn't for you, you'll develop lots of transferable skills that can go into other um, industries, which you might not get um, on other courses. So it's excellent for people who perhaps um, are really clear on what they want to do, but also for those who are a little bit unclear, you can come and develop lots and lots of transferable skills. What I would also say is, um, for hospitality, it really is an industry of endless opportunity. Um, locally, nationally and internationally, you can go and work in hospitality. Um, there's lots of new opportunities. Regionally, I think off the back of um, COVID-19, there'll be lots of new opportunities. There's also opportunities to set up your own business. In terms of sport and fitness, I genuinely can't remember the last time um, I spoke to someone who works in sport and fitness who doesn't enjoy their job. And I don't think that's something that can be said for lots of industries. So it really is an exciting curriculum area to come to. And as I say, you learn lots and lots of transferable skills that you might take to specialise in our industry or you might take out with to do a good job elsewhere. That's super. What uh, opportunities for further study are there in the, in the two fields? In terms of further study for sport and fitness, um, as I say, our pathway goes from level five all the way up to level eight HND level. So we've got lots of local opportunity. Beyond that, we're always working with universities um, to try and get routes into university courses. So we have experience of um, students in the past have progressed into year one, year two, year three, um, or sometimes into year four of university study. Um, which is excellent, and that just depends really on the university um, that you're applying to. In terms of hospitality as well, 
we have pathways that we've uh, set up and established with universities. So if people want to go on and um, to do degree study after their HNC, the staff at the college will do their utmost to support you on that journey. It's a really diverse field, but what are the career opportunities for students coming out of hospitality courses and then sport courses? Yeah, so in, in hospitality, we've got sort of, um, you, you know, the jobs that you know in hospitality and restaurants and hotels, but also sort of wider with travel companies um, and entertainment and leisure businesses. And if I was to sit here, Steve, and tell you all the jobs, you know, it would be, it'd be endless. But, you know, I think one of the things, if you are a little bit unsure, as you touched on earlier, go on um, some of the big leisure companies or go on some of the hospitality companies and have a look at the type of job roles they have. Because the beauty of it is there is a wide range of jobs within hospitality. Um, so, and lots of people go into the sector and they actually try three or four different roles before they really decide on the path they want to go in. So it's probably a good um, curriculum area if you're um, a little bit of uncertainty in terms of what you want to specialise, it still gives you that scope for choice, which is excellent. In terms of sport and fitness, um, we, we always like to talk about how behind every talented athlete, there's a team of people who support them. Um, so there's lots and lots of jobs, again, ranging from coaches and personal trainers up to sort of physios. We've had students who have then progressed on to do teaching. Um, so again, you'll develop lots of skills. We've had lots of students who have left us and set up their own businesses as well. So that's something we try to harness in the delivery to make sure that you've got all the skills to then make choices further down the line. That's great. So for those already working in hospitality or sport industry, what, what can the college offer them? Um, well, we, we sort of pride ourselves in the sport and hospitality department on the flexibility we have with staff. So if you're already working, um, the beauty of these courses is they only run two or three days a week, so you can still do your work alongside it. Um, we're very flexible in understanding that because of the demands of the industry, sometimes things crop up and you might have to work on a day that you're meant to be in college. And as long as that doesn't happen too regular occasion, you know, we, we support that and help you catch up by you giving you digital resources. Um, and we try to be as flexible as we can. What I will say is this is a really excellent opportunity because both industries are likely to change quite significantly off the back of um, coronavirus. So I think it's a great opportunity for staff um, who are already working in the industry to come and get upskilled and get trained with the most up-to-date techniques and approaches so they can then take that into the workplace. And then touching upon the current situation that you've just mentioned, what difference will the, the current lockdown make to the, the, the next session? So as a result of obviously the guidance um, that's coming out from Scottish Government, we're trying to really adapt our approach for um, the next academic year. So staff at the moment are planning um, to do remote delivery at the start of the year, perhaps. It might then phase into a blended approach where you come into college to do your practical elements, but you still do um, some work at home and remotely. And then the plan is, that, you know, when the government allows, we can get you back in the building so you can experience the full Dunfreeson Galloway College sport and hospitality student experience. Well, that's great. Well, that's all we've got for you just now, Kevin. We've got two student experience videos coming up from Sport and Hospitality, and uh, we'd just like to say thanks again for joining us live in the stream. It's been really interesting info. Thanks very much, Steve. I appreciate it. Cheers, then. Bye for now. Yeah, bye-bye. Dumfries and Galloway College invite you to study for your future in our sports and fitness department. We offer courses in the fitness, health and exercise area, as well as coaching and development, opening up career paths in all areas of the industry, including personal training, teaching, coaching and leisure. Facilities here in college, which is pretty good, you've got different varieties of uh, equipment in here, including most of the professionals ones. So it's really good, give us advantage that we got a different choices to make it choose as well what, what we could use. Whether you're coming to college straight from school or you have a few years experience behind you, we have the perfect course to further your career aspirations in this inspiring and active industry.
students should come to study at Dumfries and Galloway College because it offers a stepping stone between um, like school and maybe if they wanted to go to uni, it offers a stepping stone if they need more qualifications to come here to get them before progressing on to further education or if they're wanting or other jobs that they might want to go into within the sports industry. We've got a really good sports hall where we can take part in a range of different sports, football, basketball, badminton, tennis, uh, loads of different things there. We've also got a really up-to-date gym and we can take part in um, weight training, cardiovascular fitness. So it's a really good opportunity to develop their personal fitness and get better at any sports that they enjoy uh, and develop their kind of personal skills and employability skills as well. If sport and fitness is your passion, you're coming to the right place. This is my third year of being here. So I started with the BTEC Level 3 in sport and then it helped pick whether you were going to go down the coaching side or the fitness side. So I picked the fitness side so I then studied my HNC in fitness, health and exercise and I then I came on to do my HND and that's what I'm doing just now. Yeah, there's lots of jobs available in sport and fitness so it could be people progress on university for further study, it could be that people go into employment in the leisure local leisure facilities or it could be um, that people go and work as sports coaches. There's also the, the beauty of um, leisure and sport and sport and fitness is you learn lots of transferable skills that you can then go and use in other industries. For more information and to apply, visit www.dumgal.ac.uk. At Dumfries and Galloway College, our hospitality department pride themselves on the first class facilities and teaching available to students at both the Dumfries and Stranraer campuses. We offer two separate training routes professional cookery for those who are interested in becoming a chef or part of a kitchen team, or at our Dumfries campus, we also offer hospitality courses for those who want to focus on their front of house skills. Dumfries and Gallery College is a very modern, open uh, and friendly environment to study in. Uh, we have lots of different courses and all work together. Uh, hospitality is very friendly and we work with our sports departments, we work with hairdressing, we work with all different departments. Uh, so it's a very, a very good, nice friendly college to come to. We have lots to offer students, um, we have the most up-to-date equipment, um, we also look at all areas of hospitality, whether it's in the kitchen, whether it's front of house, whether it's working in front of office, reception, all the different areas um, and we encourage you to try all those different areas so that we can find the right area for you. Um, the restaurant where we can learn how to wait and do like front of house and then it's got the kitchen so you can like, mostly you've got house. a bit of both so that you can get so like say if you want to go into the, ho the hotel business like you can just walk in you know how to do like basically kind of everything in the job. You're already trained and stuff. Yeah. So she was learning drones and well she get if you're strong with anything you get help from your lecturers and so the facilities are downstairs are brilliant as well so it's really good. Students are able to learn in our friendly environment with the encouragement and support they need and can be confident that upon leaving college they will be equipped with all the knowledge and practical experience for a successful career in the hospitality industry. I'm hoping to go on a um, university and go all the way up to H&D hopefully and get my degree. On that, so. Yeah, so I want to get the degree in it and then maybe like go away to like a different country and then kind of study it like in that kind of like a different place. Travel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, once finished here, hopefully go on to work in the industry in a professional restaurant and get a couple of more years experience and hopefully go on work in a few restaurants at a 
and probably come to Chef Depart in maybe two or three years' time as well, hopefully. So that's the ambition anyway. <laughs> For more information and to apply, visit www.dumgal.ac.uk. Can I still apply for a college course? We are still accepting applications. Courses are filling up fast though, so we recommend you apply straight away. How do I apply? Apply online at dumgal.ac.uk. Use the search tools to look for the course you are interested in and then click the apply now button. How many courses can I apply for? You can only apply for one full-time course. If you change your mind about your course choice, you would need to withdraw your application and submit a new one. If I'm awaiting grades, what should I put on my application form? In the qualification section on the application form, list the exams you will be sitting and mark the result as pending. I don't have my own email address. Can I use a family member's? It is preferable to have your own email address. If you are a winter leaver, don't use your school email address as you will no longer be able to use it once you leave school. How will my application be considered when I haven't had an interview? Offers will be made based on applications only at this current time. Please ensure all sections are completed correctly to give you the best chance of being accepted. When do I find out if I have a place on the course? All applications received from April onward will be sent an offer email at the beginning of the next month after the application is submitted. What is a conditional offer? A conditional offer means you either have to pass the qualifications you are working towards, provide evidence of existing qualifications or a reference. Your offer will explain what your condition is. What is the waiting list? All courses have limited spaces. Once the course is full, applicants are put on a waiting list. If a place becomes available, we will notify you straight away. How do I find out about funding? For SCQF levels 4 to 6, a funding link will be emailed to you. Or for SCQF level 7 to 8, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency. When is my induction? Inductions take place approximately one week prior to courses starting. Your induction may be a virtual one, but you are still expected to attend. When will I get my timetable? You will receive your timetable as well as any other relevant information either on your induction day or by email. You may also receive a temporary bus pass if this is applicable. The admissions team are here to help Monday to Friday 8.45 to 4.30. If you have any other questions please email admissions at dumbgal.ac.uk. Attending college may mean you are eligible for funding. To find out, you should apply as soon as possible once you have been offered a place on your course. In case you are unsure of what to do next, here's a few of our most frequently asked questions to help you get started. How do I apply for funding? For SCQF level 4 to 6 courses, you will be emailed a link to the online application when you are offered a place on a course. It is essential that you check your email regularly as this is how we will communicate. What if my course is SCQF Level 7 or 8? For SCQF Level 7 to 8 courses, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency online at sas.gov.uk. What information do I need to activate my online CAMS account? You will need your student reference number, which we will provide in our activation email. You will have to create a password. Keep a note of this, as you will need it to access your account throughout the academic year. When should I apply? You should apply as soon as you have been offered a place on the course. If you don't get on the course you want, you can contact us and we will change or cancel your application. You should note that your application cannot progress and will not be considered complete until all the evidence is received. 
What happens after I submit my application? We will acknowledge receipt of your application by email. The email will also remind you of any evidence you still have to submit before we can assess your application. How will I find out how much I'm entitled to? If your application is successful, you will receive an award notice telling you how much you will receive. It will also contain a payment schedule telling you how much your payments are and when instalments are due. Usually this is fortnightly instalments. What if my funding application isn't successful? If your application is refused, you will receive an email from the college outlining the reason for refusal. The student funding team are here to help, Monday to Friday, 8.45 to 4.30. The team can be contacted by email on studentfunding at dumgal.ac.uk. For more detailed funding information, please visit the finance and funding page at dumgal.ac.uk. What's more important than a choice about your future? And what if your opportunity was right here? Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you want to be. And whenever you're ready, choose a course that offers real skills for real jobs. This is not plan B, it's your plan A. And your future education is a choice away at a college near you.
Welcome to Dumfries and Galloway College's Virtual Open Day. We hope you're all staying safe and well and we are looking forward to the new academic year starting in just a few weeks time. Of course, applications are still open, which is why we're here today. We've got some great information for you to help you decide which course is right for you to apply for. In the next few minutes, you will be able to watch an interview with the curriculum manager for the area you are interested in. This will be followed by Q&A videos for admissions and funding. We hope you find all the information you need in the following videos, but if not, please email info at umgal.ac.uk and we will answer any questions you have. Or if you need specific help with the application process or course related information, please email admissions at dumgal.ac.uk. Today could be the day you apply to start your new chapter and we're looking forward to welcoming you to Dumfries and Galloway College. Hi there, Steve. How are you, Lynn? How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Good. And Lynn, could you tell us a wee bit about yourself and your department, please? Yes, I certainly could. Well, my name is Yolan Davis. I'm a curriculum manager at the college. I oversee supported programmes both at Dumfries and Stranraer. I started working in the college in 2007 when I moved on to into the region and took up a post as a lecturer and I worked at the college ever since. No, no chance of looking for another job because I find it an excellent place to, to work. I love the work. As for our supported programmes department, next session at the college will run four full-time supported programmes at Dumfries and one full-time programme at Stringard. That's great. And what uh, what support is there? What what do we actually provide in those courses? Um, well, with the three supported programmes, that, in fact, the three supported programmes that Dumfries and one at Stranraer that happen in the college, there is um, a tutor and a learning support worker uh, available for every class. And I'm going to ask Tracy, who's the personal tutor for all three supported programmes at Dumfries, to come in and talk a wee bit about that. We have Tracy online. If you could turn on your webcam, we'll... Is Tracy there? Yep. Tracy? Is that, is that me on? You are. Yolan, could you mute your microphone now, please? Okay. And Tracy, are you there? I'm here, yes. Could you tell us a wee bit about the the courses you provide? Mm -hmm. We run three full-time courses in Dumfries. Uh, our first level is the Personal Development Achievement Award at Level 1. Um, and that's for our learners with more profound and complex support needs. Um, we keep the group quite small. Very often we have learners that maybe have a one-to-one -one support that is their own personal assistant that comes in with them. But there's also support in the class as well as a lecturer. We run a Skill Start 1 programme, which I think comes up as Life Skills at Level 2 on the prospectus. And that's for learners that are needing to progress their independent skills. There's We do... <clears throat> lots of bits of budgeting. It's very social in that it's just learning about social boundaries, how to maybe prepare for work, whether it be supported employment or part-time employment. And just generally for most of our learners, it's about the move of moving from a school pupil to becoming a college student and just learning about the wider society and what that's all about. And then our Skill Start 2 group, which comes up as Life Skills at Level 3, is usually a bit of a bigger group. There's usually slightly more in it, up to about 14. And that's for learners who maybe struggle a wee bit mainly in social situations. So they can be really quite able academically, but they find working in a social situation and being in a place where they have to respect other people's opinions and listen to other people's opinions, quite difficult. We do lots of personal budgeting, independence skills, 
um, employ the softer skills for employability, um, as well as the core skills, numeracy, IT and literacy. That's great. I don't know if we actually have Eleanor on the call as well. Eleanor, are you there? No, you all and you're muted as well at the moment. Eleanor is here and she'll be able to answer questions about um, Project Search and what Project Search provides and the support offered with that programme. Over to you, Elle. You're quite quiet, Eleanor, but if you shout, we should be okay. <laughs> I'll just scream at my computer screen. So I'm the instructor on Project Search and we are tr a transition to work programme. So what we provide is um, support to getting into employment for individuals with learning disabilities or any additional support needs. Um, on site, we're based over at Cargan. We're actually based in the college. Um, on site, the staff team consists of myself and two other members of staff. And part of my role as a personal tutor and a job coach is to support individuals in work. Um, so we provide free work placements throughout the academic year, um, along with an uh, um, employability curriculum. Um, so individuals get that total workplace immersion um, to upskill themselves to get them ready for employment. That's great. Can you tell us uh, what sort of transport and financial support there is uh, for people undertaking this course? So, oh, sorry. <laughs> so for Project Search, um, we do provide travel training, um, but we do ask that our students are um, able to travel independently by the time the course commences. Um, so we travel train beforehand and usually our students will meet at the White Sands and they'll get the bus together out to Cargan Towers, which is right next to the new hospital. So it's really easy, really simple. And we make sure that health and safety is at the forefront of our minds when we're doing our travel training. So, yeah. And uh, is, do you provide a sensory room or a quiet area? I'm going to let Tracy jump on on that, so I am. Uh, OK, Steve, can you hear me? Yeah, you're fine, Tracy. Go ahead. Um, just before I talk about um, a sensory room or a quiet area, I'd just like to pick up on the travel for the main campus at college. For our learners, um, there's many of our learners use the buses that are put on. Because we are so rural, we have lots of learners coming, obviously, from quite far out of the region. So <clears throat> the, there are many buses that come from out with the actual town centre that come straight to the college. And we support them coming in in the morning. We meet them, make sure that they're happy and know where we all meet in the morning up at Costa and we're there at night to make sure that buses arrive and that students get on the right bus. There are some of our learners that for whatever reason will maybe never independently travel and there, uh, there is a taxi bursary available, there is a part of the bursary that's built in for travel but the students have to meet a certain criteria both financially and for their needs but that is something that can be looked into if anybody needs that. And again, the support's there. We meet them in the taxi in the morning and we make sure that the taxi's there at night. So there's a bit of security there for families and for the learners. Um, as for a sensory room or a quiet room, we don't actually have a sensory room at the college. Um, we are very much about moving from that school stage to adult life. And not everywhere that um, our learners are going to, or our students are going to access is going to have that facility. So we don't, we don't have a specified quiet room, but we do have quiet areas in the college. And for many of our learners that need that quiet time and that downtime, we can provide that. And quite often, if they like to maybe put their earphones on and listen to their music and just be secluded away from everywhere, we can facilitate that. So for all, we don't have a dedicated quiet room, we do have quiet areas within the college and I appreciate that, that there is that need. 
Excellent. Yolan, would you mind coming in at this point? Do you have any spaces left on any particular courses at the moment? We do have some spaces available. Um, there are, for example, at Stranraer, we have got quite a number of applications and we could be into a waiting list there. However, we're still accepting applications and we do have um, currently difficulty in getting offers out to students because we actually need to meet our students face to face to have a conversation with them to determine what course would be best for them and also to determine um, their next steps, etc. So currently a lot of our applicants have received letters informing them that as soon as we can resume a one-to-one -one advice session interview again, their application for commencing on a college programme will be progressed. Um, we don't anticipate this happening until August, depending on government guidance, but all the applications are here. We will receive notification from them, uh, from us, and as soon as we can meet them or come to some arrangement for putting these one-to-one -one, um, discussions in place with every applicant, we can't send out offers until that point. So until that process is completed, it's very difficult to determine how many places we will have left uh, on, our, on our courses. Is there anything, Tracy or Eleanor, do you want to come in with anything there? Is that microphone on, Steve? Yeah. It is, yeah. You can go ahead. Yeah. Um, I think just you know, I support what Yolan said and that the, um, the one thing I would say is that support programmes do fill up very quickly. Um, so we do sometimes end up with a waiting list. But just to reassure people, if they haven't heard anything from us yet, I am trying to contact anybody that's sitting with an application in, try to contact them by phone. So we we would anticipate that people would know something before a face-to-face -face interview, even if it was just that discussion on the telephone with me. Thank you, Tracy. Eleanor, can you tell us the position as project search. I believe we have um, places available on it at the moment. Yep, we still have places available on project search and very much like Tracy, I'm trying to get in contact with applications that are sitting. Um, but if anyone wants any more information, um, my details are on our um, project search Facebook page and you're more than welcome to get in contact and I can talk you through more in-depth questions that you might have. Um, so, yeah. Eleanor, I think we'll get um, Rebecca to put the Project Search Facebook link onto the Open Week website. If that's that would okay. be great. And other than that, if that's all we have, I'd like to thank you all for appearing on the stream today. Very interesting information. Thank you, Steve. It's been a pleasure. And should anybody inquire, uh, want to know more, we're more than happy uh, for anybody to get in touch with the college. Their queries will be directed to either myself, Tracy or Eleanor, and we will do our best to contact them by phone or by email um, to give them more information as required on an individual basis. Well, that's great. Can I still apply for a college course? We are still accepting applications. Courses are filling up fast though, so we recommend you apply straight away. How do I apply? Apply online at dumgal.ac.uk. Use the search tools to look for the course you are interested in and then click the apply now button. How many courses can I apply for? You can only apply for one full-time course. If you change your mind about your course choice, you would need to withdraw your application and submit a new one. If I'm awaiting grades, what should I put on my application form? In the qualification section on the application form, list the exams you will be sitting and mark the result as pending. I don't have my own email address. 
can I use a family members? It is preferable to have your own email address. If you are a winter leaver, don't use your school email address as you will no longer be able to use it once you leave school. How will my application be considered when I haven't had an interview? Offers will be made based on applications only at this current time. Please ensure all sections are completed correctly to give you the best chance of being accepted. When do I find out if I have a place on the course? All applications received from April onward will be sent an offer email at the beginning of the next month after the application is submitted. What is a conditional offer? A conditional offer means you either have to pass the qualifications you are working towards, provide evidence of existing qualifications or a reference. Your offer will explain what your condition is. What is the waiting list? All courses have limited spaces. Once the course is full, applicants are put on a waiting list. If a place becomes available, we will notify you straight away. How do I find out about funding? For SCQF levels 4 to 6, a funding link will be emailed to you. Or for SCQF level 7 to 8, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency. When is my induction? Inductions take place approximately one week prior to courses starting. Your induction may be a virtual one, but you are still expected to attend. When will I get my timetable? You will receive your timetable as well as any other relevant information either on your induction day or by email. You may also receive a temporary bus pass if this is applicable. The admissions team are here to help Monday to Friday 8.45 to 4.30. If you have any other questions, please email admissions at dumbgal.ac.uk. Attending college may mean you are eligible for funding. To find out, you should apply as soon as possible once you have been offered a place on your course. In case you are unsure of what to do next, here's a few of our most frequently asked questions to help you get started. How do I apply for funding? For SCQF Level 4-6 to six courses, you will be emailed a link to the online application when you are offered a place on a course. It is essential that you check your email regularly as this is how we will communicate. What if my course is SCQF Level 7 or 8? For SCQF Level 7 to 8 courses, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency online at sas.gov.uk. What information do I need to activate my online CAMS account? You will need your student reference number, which we will provide in our activation email. You will have to create a password. Keep a note of this, as you will need it to access your account throughout the academic year. When should I apply? You should apply as soon as you have been offered a place on the course. If you don't get on the course you want, you can contact us and we will change or cancel your application. You should note that your application cannot progress and will not be considered complete until all the evidence is received. What happens after I submit my application? We will acknowledge receipt of your application by email. The email will also remind you of any evidence you still have to submit before we can assess your application. How will I find out how much I'm entitled to? If your application is successful, you will receive an award notice telling you how much you will receive. It will also contain a payment schedule telling you how much your payments are and when instalments are due. Usually this is fortnightly instalments. What if my funding application isn't successful? If your application is refused, you will receive an email from the college outlining the reason for refusal. The student funding team are here to help Monday to Friday 8.45 to 4.30. The team can be contacted by email on studentfunding at dumgal.ac.uk. For more detailed funding information, please visit the finance and funding page at dumgal.ac.uk. What's more important than a choice about your future? And what if your opportunity was right here? Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you want to be. And whenever you're ready, choose a course that offers real skills for real jobs. 
this is not plan B, it's your plan A. And your future education is a choice away at a college near you.
Welcome to Dumfries and Galloway College's Virtual Open Day. We hope you're all staying safe and well and we are looking forward to the new academic year starting in just a few weeks time. Of course, applications are still open, which is why we're here today. We've got some great information for you to help you decide which course is right for you to apply for. In the next few minutes, you will be able to watch an interview with the curriculum manager for the area you are interested in. This will be followed by Q&A videos for admissions and funding. We hope you find all the information you need in the following videos, but if not, please email info at dumgal.ac.uk and we will answer any questions you have. Or if you need specific help with the application process or course related information, please email admissions at dumgal.ac.uk. Today could be the day you apply to start your new chapter and we're looking forward to welcoming you to Dumfries and Galloway College. Please welcome Sharon Mays from External Development to the stream. Hi Sharon, would you mind uh, telling everyone a bit about yourself and your department please? Good afternoon Steve, thanks for inviting um, External Development and myself to the live open week this week and, and I'm actually bringing up the rear so I'm closing off the, the virtual week this week. Um, my name is Sharon Mays and I'm the team leader for funded programmes and an active member of the external development team within the college. My main responsibility is looking after Skills Development Scotland funded contracts on offer within the college. These currently include foundation and modern apprenticeships, employability fund and digital IT skills. Other funded programmes are also run throughout the academic year in partnership with other local businesses. I've been asked to talk to you today primarily about modern apprenticeships. So what modern apprenticeships do we have on offer? We offer them through 11 sectors and they are business administration at SCQF levels five and six, childcare at SCQF levels seven and nine, construction SCQF level six, which is in joinery, bricklaying, and painting and decorating. Customer services at SCQF level six. Engineering at SCQF level six. Facility services at SCQF level nine. Hairdressing at SCQF levels five and six. Hospitality, which is food prep and services at SCQF level five. Hospitality Professional Cookery at SCQF Level 6. Light Vehicle Maintenance at Levels SCQF Levels 5 and 7. And Management at SCQF Levels 7 and 9. And Social Care at SCQF Level 6 and 7. So that's quite an extensive list. So just to tell you a little bit about each one. Well, an overarching view. Each modern apprenticeship lasts for a differing period of time, ranging from 12 months up to a total of four years. And yes, I did say four years. Um, the ones which last for a period of four years are in construction and engineering. They're a mixture of college attendants, usually during the academic year, and that's to gain the theory and underpinning knowledge for those that are a bit more complicated subjects. The light vehicle maintenance at SCQF level five runs for a period of over two years. Now that's also a mixture of college attendance and work-based learning for the same reasons. It's more complicated frameworks. All modern apprenticeships are based on work-based learning and, the, and there are dedicated assessors within the external development department who are sub, subject specialists so they know what they're talking about. They're assigned to each candidate with the responsibility of taking the candidate through their qualification, explaining to them what exactly is required of them to achieve the standards set by the awarding bodies. The important thing to remember about undertaking a modern apprenticeship is that you must be in permanent employment, not a volunteer. Okay? And that's being paid a wage that is suited to your age group. 
Apprenticeship opportunities are on offer to individuals from the age of 16 and upwards. And there are some restrictions to the upper age limit in certain sectors. This can be discussed at query. It's also important for employers to note that you can either employ new members of staff specifically as a modern apprenticeship, or you can look at your existing employees and offer the opportunity for them to be upskilled and go through this qualification as well. The primary role of the external development team is to liaise with individuals and businesses, bringing qualifications and opportunities to them within their workplace. Within the external development team, there are smaller teams who are responsible for different areas of learning, such as modern apprenticeships, which I'm here to talk to you about today, um, SBQs, short courses and bespoke packages of courses suited to employers' needs. Online courses with dedicated tutors allocated for support. All of these opportunities are for, the, are for those who are looking for an alternative to gaining a qualification without attending college on a full-time basis. Everyone who signs up to any of the above courses, whether they are over a short period of time, one day a week, over a, over a number of weeks, an online course, and of course, modern apprentices, you are all classed as students of the college. Therefore, you're entitled to a student ID card, uh, which can be used in certain retail outlets who offer student discounts. Once you've been enrolled and, you're, and you have obtained your login details, you will be able to use the college facilities, whether it's at Dumfries or the Stranra College campuses. This means access to computers and the library for the duration that you are a student. So we do class you as college students. You're not just somebody doing a short course. Despite the coronavirus situation, the external development team continues to operate remotely, actively communicate, communicating in a virtual manner with existing students, employers. We're also engaging with new candidates and employers, offering them the best options and solutions to their queries. We do not currently have any further inf information yet from the Scottish Government but will act on Scottish Government advice as to when we open our college again, allowing students back through the doors. We have an excellent team of talented staff within the external development team who are highly trained and have already adjusted their methods of working and assessing, embracing the current situation. If you've got any queries at all and, and they're not answered in this today's session, please email apprenticeships at dumgal.ac.uk and I personally will ensure that your query is passed to the correct person within the external development team or it may well be another member of the entire college from the whole college um, employers, employees. That's so. great, thanks Sharon and I understand the, from what you're saying you have to be employed to do a modern apprenticeship but how do you apply for a modern apprenticeship? The first thing is, obviously, if you're, you've got a job, you speak to your employer and say, there's an opportunity, um, could I do a modern apprenticeship? That's very important that the employer has to be engaged and buy into this kind of qualification. So it's important to find out whether your employer will support you through that then yourself along with the employer can actually approach us and then we can start the ball rolling, ask relevant questions, how long have you been in the job, what's your job role, what would be the best suitable apprenticeship for you and your business. And you've covered it slightly but in all courses do you have to attend college at any time in all of the courses? No, as I mentioned the primary apprenticeships for attendance of college are engineering and motor vehicle. Now, if you've been a previous full-time student at the college and you've actually gained part of what is required for the modern apprenticeship already, then you will not need to go back to college to redo that course. You've already gained that part of the apprenticeship framework. Um, so 
one size doesn't fit all. It depends what you're coming to us with. Um, but if you don't have any previous relevant qualifications for those two subjects, you will need to attend college to get the underpinning knowledge. The other subject area where you will need to come into the college premises would be hairdressing. And that is solely for end of unit assessment. So every time you finish a unit within the framework, you'd come into the college to do an online multiple choice test um, on the unit you've just done. Um, but that that's it. I think they're working towards online tests remotely for that. Um, for hospitality, we may offer at some point, depending how all of candidates get on, we can offer um, master classes, um, but we would only put those on as and when they would be required, uh, butchery or bread making. So it's only as they're required. So also with the hospitality, if they don't have first aid and health and safety, they would need to come along and do one of our short courses. But the funding that we receive from Skills Development Scotland would would pay for that particular part of the qualification. We're just coming on to that part, actually. Uh, how does how do you actually get paid when you're a modern apprentice? So the apprentice is classed as an employee of an employer. Um, we can only give general advice, but it's up to the employer to ensure that they're paying the individual a living wage relevant to their age category. Um, we often get asked, oh, can I pay this? Can I pay that? And we say, sorry, we can't get involved and recommend. There is a link on our college website um, under the business section and work-based learning and apprenticeships saying, how much do I get paid? There is a link to HMRC, um, which explains all the levels of wages appropriate to age groups. There is an apprenticeship wage and there are um, rules and regulations. So they say there, there are restrictions to how long that can be paid and how much is, is paid. But it's up to the employer to go and have a look at that website. OK, and so what happens to your modern apprenticeship if you change to another employer? Oh, this, that's a very good question. Um, it's vital that the candidate, the modern apprentice, and the employer understand that the apprenticeship belongs to the candidate. So if the candidate, for some reason, decided, oh, I don't like working for this business, I want to get a business, go to another business, but in the same industry, um, and they said, yes, we'll support you through your modern apprenticeship, they continue where they left off with the previous employer. So they don't have to start all over again, they just carry on. The apprenticeship goes with the candidate. It doesn't belong to the employer. Now, the employer is more, we're more than happy for the employer to take on another apprentice and put them through another qualification so it's not a case of, oh, we had an apprentice this year, we've lost them, they've gone somewhere else, we can't take somebody else on. Yes, you can.
can I still apply for a college course? We are still accepting applications. Courses are filling up fast though, so we recommend you apply straight away. How do I apply? Apply online at dumgal.ac.uk. Use the search tools to look for the course you are interested in and then click the apply now button. How many courses can I apply for? You can only apply for one full-time course. If you change your mind about your course choice, you would need to withdraw your application and submit a new one. If I am awaiting grades, what should I put on my application form? In the qualification section on the application form, list the exams you will be sitting and mark the results as pending. I don't have my own email address, can I use a family member's? It is preferable to have your own email address. If you are a winter leaver, don't use your school email address as you will no longer be able to use it once you leave school. How will my application be considered when I haven't had an interview? Offers will be made based on applications only at this current time. Please ensure all sections are completed correctly to give you the best chance of being accepted. When do I find out if I have a place on the course? All applications received from April onward will be sent an offer email at the beginning of the next month after the application is submitted. What is a conditional offer? A conditional offer means you either have to pass the qualifications you are working towards, provide evidence of existing qualifications or a reference. Your offer will explain what your condition is. What is the waiting list? All courses have limited spaces. Once the course is full, applicants are put on a waiting list. If a place becomes available, we will notify you straight away. How do I find out about funding? For SCQF levels 4 to 6, a funding link will be emailed to you. Or for SCQF level 7 to 8, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency. When is my induction? Inductions take place approximately one week prior to courses starting. Your induction may be a virtual one, but you are still expected to attend. When will I get my timetable? You will receive your timetable as well as any other relevant information either on your induction day or by email. You may also receive a temporary bus pass if this is applicable. The admissions team are here to help Monday to Friday 8.45 to 4.30. If you have any other questions, please email admissions at dumgal.ac.uk. Attending college may mean you are eligible for funding. To find out, you should apply as soon as possible once you have been offered a place on your course. In case you are unsure of what to do next, here's a few of our most frequently asked questions to help you get started. How do I apply for funding? For SCQF level 4 to 6 courses, you will be emailed a link to the online application when you are offered a place on a course. It is essential that you check your email regularly as this is how we will communicate. What if my course is SCQF level 7 or 8? For SCQF level 7 to 8 courses, you can apply to the Student Awards Agency online at sas.gov.uk. What information do I need to activate my online CAMS account? You will need your student reference number, which we will provide in our activation email. You will have to create a password. Keep a note of this, as you will need it to access your account throughout the academic year. When should I apply? You should apply as soon as you have been offered a place on the course. If you don't get on the course you want, you can contact us and we will change or cancel your application. You should note that your application cannot progress and will not be considered complete until all the evidence is received. What happens after I submit my application? We will acknowledge receipt of your application by email. The email will also remind you of any evidence you still have to submit before we can assess your application. How will I find out how much I'm entitled to? If your application is successful, you will receive an award notice telling you how much you will receive. It will also contain a payment schedule telling you how much your payments are and when instalments are due. Usually this is fortnightly instalments. What if my funding application isn't successful? 
If your application is refused, you will receive an email from the college outlining the reason for refusal. The student funding team are here to help, Monday to Friday, 8.45 to 4.30. The team can be contacted by email on studentfunding at dumgal.ac.uk. For more detailed funding information, please visit the finance and funding page at dumgal.ac.uk. What's more important than a choice about your future? And what if your opportunity was right here? Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you want to be. And whenever you're ready, choose a course that offers real skills for real jobs. This is not plan B, it's your plan A. And your future education is a choice away at a college near you.